six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. 39, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. Okay, um, how now, Brown Cow? My mother told me to tell you that this is weird. I wonder if they're gonna give out pink shirts today. I want a shirt. If they give out a Fear the Swarm shirt, I want a shirt. That's what I want. So, Byron, how's your day going, sir? Well, what? How did, where did I go up from? This mic? I got it from downstairs. Probably. It sounds good for the most part. I'm just trying to figure out what to say so that I don't know. Let's try. That's it. Oh wait, was I supposed to connect this to blue or red? Uh, blue. Alright. Alright, can you hear me now? This is red. Red headset. Okay. This is the mic. Um, you want to try the other one on the blue? Watching these football players run plays, it doesn't look like it'll be too successful. Um, so yeah, after they put finish that drive off. Then... Now the mic is on the blue wire. Can you hear me? Um, I'm still watching these football players. I like this song. I like I, I like Gotti actually. I'm mad he only did three songs. Byron, how do you feel about that? All right. You said tell Byron that? And I said, at some point, Gabe made it to start running around a little bit. All right, Byron, he said go downstairs and get the stuff for the microphones because you'll be on the microphones. Take the headsets down with him. Yeah, come, come down there and get the stuff for the microphones. Byron on his way down.
So you want me to just leave this mic up here? All right. Is there another desktop stand? Just to show you how much you Glenn and I are. I was thinking yesterday. Um, no. Man, we had that ride from Delmar all the way home again. Because we normally don't stop for anything. I said, yeah, I said no. You mentioned that Glenn, that maybe we should stop and stop. We're in the vehicle on the way last night. Get down there. Close to get down there. You know, I think we should stop and get food after. <laughs> I was going to do eventually, man. I want to try and make you do it. You do enough for this. Do it across the game. Or do it across the game, I'm saying. So, it's the same soundtrack. Um, it's good? Oh, this one for fun. Right so, I'm going to wish Mike. This Mike? I think both. You want your soundtrack? So, how the heck am I supposed to do Hey, Byron, talking to your mic and I'm talking to Rollins. Hello. Me. Hey, can you hear us? Can you, you can set it up first. You need some more cord? Bring the cord. Yeah, I need a lot more cord, actually. Oh, okay. Right. Break it ahead. Yeah, Ain't no thing. It sounds like what now? Me or Bobber? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Can you hear me? I can hear you, bro. Oh, I can hear you, but yeah. Keep talking. I'm gonna keep talking. You guys just said keep talking. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I will eat some. Chick-fil-A is here. Yeah, Al. You're here. Okay, sir. Right. I think it's in there, Derek. I think it's there, Derek. 
I don't know yet, Derek. I didn't look yet, Derek. There it is, Derek. You found it. Are you still need me to talk? He is officially done. Good talk, Alumni man. Stadium. Hopefully, the Hornets win today. Two and six. That is a horrible record. Put two and two in the MIAC. We already. Just count to 100 if you run out of stuff. Yeah, you know, just my day was okay. I'm very hungry. I anticipate looking forward to this food. Um, you know, other than that, I'm alright. Some recruits down there. Can any of them throw the football? Hello. One, two, three, four, five. Can you hear he, he can't he can't hear you, I can hear you, but Yeah, what's up? What's up, what's up? What's up? He said, whenever y'all need to make a comment to each other, like on the side, just cover the mic. Okay. So, like, so like, so like, yeah, like this. So, like, this. Hey, Juan, if you can hear me, let me know, because I'm, I'm not talking to the mic yet. Wow. Have a conversation, Bobby. Let's go. So, how about those Baltimore Ravens? How do you feel about that football team? Potential Super Bowl party crasher. I agree. I think they're the AFC powerhouse. I think they're going to make some noise this year. I think we have a shot at least at the AFC Championship game. I think we're better than New England Patriots. I think we're probably the second best team in the AFC right now. And um, you get in the playoffs, anything can happen. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, Joe Flacco plays his best football in January. So, We'll see if they can, you know, get it together, get the offense going, keep the defense steady. The number one scoring defense in the NFL, I think that's good. On defense, number one in turnover differential. You know, and um, those people make two bowls. Um, I don't know what else has to be said. Uh, who do you think is coming out of the NFC? Like the Seahawks look like they're struggling right now. Look no further than those boys in Texas. How about them Cowboys? No, I'm a firm believer in the Cowboys. Tony Romo, Tony World. Marco Murray, MVP right now, best offensive line in the league, defense, not giving up big plays, only going to get better as the season progresses. Some of that guys get healthy and come back. Look out for the Cowboys. Yeah, okay. Well, if that's the case, who's better than them? Who's better than them? Keep talking, Barry. Keep talking, Barry. He's a top ten defender in the league, probably. Um, he'll be there for that team as they rebuild. Um, the quarterback position is still up in the air. I like Mike Glennon, but I don't know if he's the answer. But he's solid. Win the Pittsburgh game, win the drive. No one saw that coming. NC State guy, big arm. Um, a lot better than Josh McCown to me, but that, I'm Keep still talking. talking. Yes, I'm talking now. I'm very tired of talking. I'm hungry. All right, so um, I think the Buccaneers is another team that should be out in two years, depending on how Mike Glennon develops. But they're 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 yeah, unstable their at the running back position. Be than it is, but yeah, they're trash on defense, and they they bought a lot. They they spent a lot of money. But uh, yes, he is. Um, Devontae David is very good. You can you not hear him? You can't hear Byron. Say something, bro. Hello. Can y'all not hear him? What's what's up? You. Go ahead, hey, talk. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. So, uh, what, what's the move tonight, bro? I have no clue. I want to do something. Me too. I, I wasted alcohol on these young ladies. I'm not gonna call them outside their name, even though I want to. Always never good when you waste money. This guy's really 5'9". I really don't believe this. I have to see this. Is he on the field? I haven't seen him on the field yet. I see number seven taking the snaps, and he has a left-handed throw like Oh, Vic. that's the 5'9 quarterback? No. There he is. Number 12. There he is. Josh Patrick throw. Oh, he's a righty. Oh, he, he, yeah, he's definitely 5'9". He's got an arm. No, he doesn't. <laughs> it's okay. It wasn't like a Kaepernick bullet, but who throws like Kaepernick? 
Uh, y'all good down there? I can go back okay, to my camera. Good. Yes. Um, he said, keep the headset on, y'all, because I'm going to be talking to y'all. Somebody keep the headset on. Hello? Yeah, what's up, Juan? The little the foam piece? You talking about the little foam thing that goes on? Alright. All right. Testing, testing, testing one, two, test, 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 testing one, two, testing one, two. I'm gonna walk with this real quick. Test, test, testing one, two, testing one, two. Test, 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 test. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Test, 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 testing one, two. It's a great day out here at Alumni Stadium with 48 minutes and 42 seconds to go on counting until game time. I am now standing on the track. Testing one two, testing one two. I'm now standing at the ten yard line. Testing one two, testing one two. Test test test, testing one two. I'm now standing at the twenty yard line. Test test, testing one two. I'm now standing at the twenty five. Okay, well, anyways. Test test, testing one two. Test test test. If you can hear me, it's good. Great.
All right, then. I'm going to take off the other headset for right now and give it to Byron, okay?
about to say, you can go right now. The open house is crowded. I know, that shit drawing. I just went up there, I was like, give me some chips real quick. They usually bring them food up there. I mean, I was up there. They got food, but I ain't gonna take it. I like the spicy Looking at chicken up. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're tuned in to another live production of WTSU Television. I'm Roland DeBruce, along with Byron Dixon up in the booth, and Derek Slayton out on the field. We're glad you're making us part of your Saturday afternoon. So today we're ready, getting ready for another round of Hornet football. Delaware State University takes on Hampton University Pirates. Delaware State takes on Hampton in a MEAC conference game. The Hornets are 2-6 and six and 2-2 two and two in the MEAC and are trying to bounce back from a 33-20 to 20 loss to North Carolina A&T last week. Delaware State gave up two touchdowns on offense, defense, and special teams in the first 22 minutes to trail 24 to nothing at the half. The Hornets scored a season-high 20 points in the fourth quarter, but it was not enough. Delaware State running back Jamal Jackson rushed for a career-high 100 yards in the contest. Defensively, Hornet safety Devon Moore tallied a career-best 16 tackles, while Tarek Colson had an interception for the fourth straight game. Hampton University Pirates come in with a 1-6 record and 0-3 in the MEAC and brings a three-game losing streak into the contest. Pirates are coming off a 21-13 loss to Norfolk State last week. Hampton held Norfolk State to just two yards rushing, but allowed 335 passing yards in the contest. Hampton led 10-7 after a second quarter touchdown, but the Spartans regained the lead for good with a touchdown less than a minute before halftime. The running back, Jorian Washington, ended up rushing for a game-high 85 yards on 21 carries for the Pirates. This will be the 40th meeting between the Hornets and the Pirates. Hampton won the last contest 30 to 7 on its home field in 2013 to open up a 25 to 14 series lead. The Pirates rushed for 225 yards in last year's meeting, including 127 from Jorian Washington, who also scored a touchdown. The Hornets posted a 35-27 win the last time the teams met at Delaware State in 2012. DSU racked up a season-high 512 yard total yards, including 212 yards rushing in the contest. It's a beautiful day up here in Dover, Delaware, as we're getting ready to kick this one off. Here in a minute, we're going to go down to Derek Slayton. As, uh, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And uh, Delaware State has got something cooking for this event today. So let's join Derek down on the field as he will give an update of what he's got, also an injury report, and the weather. Down to you, Derek. By the American College of Radiology. While many people know the dangers of breast cancer, not a lot of people do the necessary steps for early detection and fail to encourage others to do the same. That's why DSU's football team will be wearing pink socks and pink wristbands, and DSU staff will be wearing this shirt. And we'll open it up for you guys. For the Breast Cancer Awareness Day, because this, this is the day for that Breast Cancer Awareness game. 
In terms of the injury front, Aaron Scott and Asaya Obato will be out with injuries once again. Back up to you, Roland, with more. Thanks a lot, Derek. Yeah, we'll be watching, as most of the officials also will be in pink today. Uh, a lot of the players will have it as well. And I think Delaware State makes a pretty big on its community activities, and this is one of them. Last year was the same event. You see a lot of pink balloons around the stadium. A lot of the men and women fans coming in are also wearing pink today as well to show their support for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Byron, last week we had a tough game. Giving up a touchdown uh, offensively, defensively, and special teams. What do you see the Hornets having to do today to get that win against Hampton? Well, Roland, you talked about teams coming in today struggling. Hornets 2-6, two 2-2 and six, two and two in the MEAC. The Hampton Pirates are 1-6, 0-3 oh in the MEAC. So they're actually with their first MEAC win of the season. Last week it was homecoming. You look back at the game, the score was 33-20, to 20, but the game wasn't really that close. Delaware State University really got tossed around a lot in that game, kind of got beat on the line of scrimmage, and the score kind of indicated that. So one thing today I'm going to look forward to as far as we go to impact players, I'm going to start on the defensive end with the Hornets. Defense has been one of the mainstays, one of the better defenses in the MEAC. I look no further than the defensive line of Rodney Gunter. Rodney Gunter leads the team in sacks. And in this game, you have a matchup of wills, a matchup of strengths. The Hornets defense and great passing defense, that secondary with Devon Warren to work coasting against this pass offense of the Hampton Pirates. So you have to be able to get pressure on a quarterback. And for the Hampton Pirates, I'm going to go with tailback Jorian Washington. Last, year, last week, he had a very good game. He's been one of the mainstays for this Hampton Pirate offense. And it's something that the Hornets are going to have to count for as well. The Pirates kind of do a little bit of things well on offense. They're very balanced so that the Hornet defense will have to be aware of that. For the keys to the game, first thing, we're going to get it out the way early. It's going to be special teams. We talk about it all the time, but last week you saw another punt block for a touchdown. And it's like as if these guys are just sending 11 people each time on the Hornet special teams, and they cannot block anyone. So it's like everyone runs through and touch, gets a block, and it's a touchdown just about every week. Another thing, offensively, I think they're going to have to establish their running game. Last week, you saw a lot of Jamal Jackson early and often. I think Jamal Jackson played very well last week. Offensive line opened up some holes. Even then, a loss, it's good to see they stayed committed to the run, and they ran the football well. The last thing, and probably one of the most importantly, they definitely had to get pressure on the quarterback. I talked about Rodney Gunter being the impact player today. I think they're going to have to get pressure on this quarterback here, create some turnovers, get some sacks. Gunter and the guys up front on the defensive line. Linebacker core has been pretty solid all year. And Devon Moore, Turk, Colston. They've been very doing a great job in the secondary, so hopefully they can create some turnovers with this pressure. Pressure creates a lot of things, and it starts with the guys up front row. You know, Byron, looking at this Hampton team that's coming in here, we're, we're looking at Jorian Washington, the five foot seven, 167 pound senior. He could be a problem running the football against the Hornets, but so far the Hornets have done pretty good defensively in stopping the run. As a matter of fact, I was talking to a few fans before the tonight today's contest, and uh, all of them tend to agree that the defense was what they thought was going to be the most questionable part of this Hornets de uh, team to the, this year, and in fact, it's the defense that's played the, the best. Definitely. Like you said about the defense here, Roland, I think it's probably the best defense in the MEAC. You look at each level. At the defensive line, Rodney Gunter. You look at the linebacking core, you have a great plethora of good young linebackers. Then the secondary, you have Tariq Colston, and you have Devon Moore. I don't think you get any better with that, especially as a cumulative group. One thing they do well, they play great against the run. They play good, solid man-to-man -man defense. And I think they get solid pressure. Last week, Gunter was kind of quiet. The North Carolina anti offensive line did a great job of containing him. But I think today he can have a big game, maybe see him move around a little bit on the defensive line, create some havoc for the offensive line of the Hampton Pirates. And create some turnovers. Let Devon Moore get a pick, place in the field. Let Tariq Coulson get a pick as well. And take one back to the house. The defense has been the offense this season for us, Roland. You always don't want that, but it's good to have a defense that can bend but don't break. And that's kind of been the motto because the offense has turned the ball over in bad positions. And we've seen a lot of blocked field goals or blocked punts that have put the defense in bad positions. But they've had their backs against the wall and they come out swinging. So that's always good to see no matter what goes on. Well, the captains are out there on midfield. The coin toss has just been taken care of. We're waiting on Fleming Williams' call. She makes it to the announcement. 
So the Hornets have won the toss and have decided to defer until the second half. So the Pirates will get the football to start this start this game. They'll be moving from the western end zone to the eastern end zone or left to right on your radio dial. Now this offense of the Horn of they're going to be starting a new quarterback today. Jarrell Antone, Antone will get the start for the Pirates today. And uh, it'll be interesting what he's going to be able to deliver. I expect to see a heavy dose of running by Jorian Washington and kind of limited on the passing attack for the Pirates this afternoon. Definitely, Will. I think you see the confidence of these captains on this defense because they're deferred to start the game. So they're going to put their defense on the field first. And with that, they will receive the second half kick and from the second half. So put a defense on the field first, something you don't see a lot of times, but I think that shows the confidence and the faith they have in this defense. And I think this defense is amped up, ready to go, set the tempo here early and often in front of their hometown fans as fans begin to pile in and you hear the approaching storm marching band here on Breast Cancer Awareness Day. Now I know I'm going to have a, a little bit of problem on some of the wide receivers because we're going to have a uh, Ray Sean Proctor and a Ray Shad Riddick. So I know I'm going to confuse those two first names. A bunch of R's coming out for that pirate offense this afternoon. Well, we're getting ready to start. Mitchell Ward's teeing the ball up at the 35-yard line. And that man, Jory in Washington, drops back. Jory in Washington back to return a kick. So as we talked about special teams early and often in this game, as we talked about the past month, all season it seems like, Washington, one of the impact players, one of the best players on the Hampton team, will be involved in this game early, and he may return this kick. Coming up short, field at the 28-yard line. He's hit at the 30 and down at the 31-yard line. Saquon Gooding, starting tight end, took the kick, brought it five yards to the 33. So it'll be first and 10 for the 33 for the Hampton Pirates. Ball is marked out the right hash. Joel Antoine. Antoine takes the Pirates out for their first offensive series this afternoon. Interesting to see how the Hornets will come out. Looks like Gunther is moving around a little bit trying to confuse his team. Looks like he's lining up on the inside of the defensive line trying to create havoc. The single back is Washington. We should be calling his name, but... Antone drops back, rolls to his left. He's got a man to Saquon Gooding caught at the 47-yard line of the Hornets. He put the ball down a little early. That's well, it looks like the field judge is saying that he was down by contact. Well, you see, as we talked about matchup of strengths, you saw Gunter may have been held on that play. I was looking at the defensive line, offensive line matchup. But time down the field, allowed the quarterback to scramble to his left and find a guy open. Guys can't be covered forever, so you're going to have to Get pressure on the quarterback because if you give this guy time, he's going to pick you apart. 21-yard pickup for Goody. Bring up first and 10 at Delaware 46. They give it to Washington, running left, hit at the 45, and that's where he's going to be dropped. Maybe he got up to the 43. Yes, that's where they're going to mark him at. Brought down by L.B. Williams with the tackle. Bring up second and seven at the Delaware State 43. And fakes to Washington up the middle. He's got some pressure. Evades it. Ball's on the ground, but he recovers it still on the ground. It's going to be marked at the 41-yard 40, line. Let's see who came up with that. I think the Pirates have recovered it. Antone. Corey Alpici with the recovery on the... So third and five at the 41, so a big third down stop here for the Hornets. Coming. Big third, big third down stop rolling. And um, you always want to get off the field as a defense on third down. That's what makes separates the good defenses from great defenses, being able to stop opposing offenses on third down, get off the field, get some rest, and get your offense back on the field to start this game. Hopefully they can get some momentum off of this defense. They move Riddick in motion. They're looking at it's intercepted at the line of scrimmage. Picked off. 
Gabriel Sherrod with the interception. He read that play as motion from Rashad Riddick. They threw to him, and Sherrod just stepped up, made the interception in the backfield, and brought it back down to the Hampton Pirate. 25 yard line. Well, Rowan, I talked about giving your offense a great place to start. They did an excellent job there. They created the turnover like they talked about pregame. And you see the offense there. Blew on a little predictability there. Liked watching film and he knew what the play was and he got the interception. Great instincts there. Well, Kelly gives it off to Najee Jackson. Jackson or Jamal Jackson up over the 25 down. The 23. A pickup of about two. He was brought down there by Joshua Thorne. So bring up second and eight. One thing Kelly, though. in the shotgun formation, Jamal Jackson alone set back with three wide receivers off to the right. He gives it to Jackson again, hit the line of scrimmage, bounces off, picks off about two yards. It's going to be brought down to about 22. With Keith McAfee with the tackle. Big third down here after this turnover. You want to convert this third down and get a first. Put some points on this board. Make it hurt for the Pirates. Definitely want to make this defense pay after you get the turnover from your own defense. So five wide receivers set here for Kelly. Look for him to make a play down the field. Look out for Milton Williams. Empty backfield. He's going to run it straight up the middle. He's got some room. He's going to get the first down up over or down inside the 15 down to the 12-yard line. So a nice run there as a pickup of about eight or 13. Great play there by Kelly. You see his ability as a dual threat quarterback. I like the play call there. It deceived us as a pass, five receiver set. So you get the defense spread out. You hike the ball, you delay for a second, and once you get back in, he has a clear wide open path for first down. Good first conversion. First and 10 at the 12. They give it to Jamal Jackson. He's hit and dropped at the 13. Good penetration there by a the Pirate defense is Robert Copeland came in, busted it in through the backfield, dropped him for a one-yard loss. So as we talked about early in the pregame, you see Jamal Jackson, the workhorse yet again, the running back of this week's choice. And um, he's got a lot of carries to start this game out. Not the big run yet, but that's why you continue to put to pound the rock. Empty backfield for Kelly with three receivers to the left and two to the right. You got a whistle? See what we got. Timeout Hornets. Ten minutes and 41 seconds left here in the first quarter. And Kermit Blunt didn't like what he was seeing out there defensively for the Pirates. Calls their first timeout. So the Hornets will come out. Talk about the second and 11 they've got from the 13. It's critical right now that they get the points on the board. They still have two more downs to work with, second and third down. So you don't have to go for the 11 yards here but you take chunks at a time possibly. And look maybe in the red zone. He loves to throw Milton Williams that jump ball, or that fade route. Look for him possibly here. He has a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage. So maybe they can take a shot here on second down knowing they still have third down to work with. And it'll be interesting to see what they do if they don't get the first down as they don't have 100% trust in the special teams unit, especially in this kicking game. down 11 for the Hornets. Jamal Jackson sets up as a far wide receiver on the right hand side. Marlon Kelly surveying the grounds. He's looking hit and down at the 21 yard line. As Joshua Thorne busted loose and sacked him for a six yard loss. That was just a free runner to the quarterback. You never want to have that. A little bit of a miscommunication there on the offensive line. Anytime you go to a foul receiver set, you end up having receivers and extra rusher so you had a free rusher there coming clean and knocking Kelly right off of the strong side so so third and 18 for the Hornets Jamal Jackson lone setback Morris Frazier off to the far right three wide receivers for the left Kelly gives it to Jackson hitting the backfield again he's going to be dropped for about another four yard loss and the Hornets just went backwards on that last portion of that drive. 
to bring up a fourth and 22 at the 24 yard line. And Mitchell Ward's going to come in to attempt the field goal. It's like they conceded there, Roland. I don't like the play calling. It's a little too conservative. They didn't even try to attempt to take a shot for the first down. It's like as if they're betting on the fact that they're going to make this field goal, something that has not been a given at all this season. And so we'll see how it goes here. 41 yard attempt by Ward. Kick is up, and it is wide left. So the kicking woes continue for the Hornets as they waste a golden opportunity to put points on the board. Now the Hornets will take over first and ten. As I like to do so often on these broadcasts, talk about the holiday season. They were given a gift on that interception. I mean, it was just like a birthday gift handed right to them. Got the interception in prime field position, and yet again they could not score. It's disappointing, and you got to wonder about that play call, like I said, on third down. Why not even take a shot at the first down, knowing you don't have trust in this kicking game? Check that first and ten for the Pirates at their own 24. Ball centered in between the hashes. Antone's going to fire to the left, and he's got a man caught at the 29. Breaks a couple of tackles, finally brought down at the 32 to Rayshad Riddick. With Alex Perry to bring him down. But a nice little pickup there by Riddick. Bring up second and two at the 32. A lot of twos there rolling. Hopefully the Hornets can stop this two-yard outburst here. Looking left, he's got a man, caught it, and then fell right to the ground. It was a little bit higher to Twarn Mixon. Talk about a game of luck, a game of chance. If he catches that ball with a full hit of steam and does a trip, he has nothing but open room and blockers in front of him. So good job there. Something actually going the Hornets' way. T.J. Mixon with a nice little catch. It was a tough one. It was a little high. Came down with it. Unfortunately, it was for a one-yard loss. So, third and three. Hornets looking to stop. Antone faked the pass and then gave it over to Washington. It picked up one, so he's going to be short. It's going to bring up a fourth and two. Dropped down at the 32-yard line, so the Hornets read that one pretty good. Covered the fake and made the uh, nice tackle on Washington. Great job there by the Hornet defense. A little bit of a delay there by the offense, but the Hornet defense, first, third down conversion, they face, get the interception. Second, third down conversion, they get a stop. Solid defense there. We call that holding it down for the squad. Well, Christian Faber, Kenny, drops back to his 22 or 18-yard line to put off the kick. A little bit of pressure by the Hornets, but he gets the ball off. Malik Golson's going to let it go out of bounds. We'll wait for the side judge to call it, and he does at the 23-yard line. That looks like a little bit of a generous spot there by the line judge because it looks like the ball was out close to around a 30, 35-yard line, but interesting to see where they spotted that at. Yeah, it ends up being a 46-yard punt for Kenny. And I could be the first to tell you that was not 46 yards. So first attempt for the Hornets at the 23. Seven minutes and 30 seconds left here in the first quarter. The Hornets have the ball for their second drive of this game. In motion, they give it to him. That's Markel Knight. And he's not going anywhere. Maybe he picked up one moving left to right. Running east to west never is a big thing of mine, especially when you don't have the blocking in front of you. And it takes a lot to be able to run east and west. I always say the quick way to the end zone is a straight line, run at, right at the defense and make them react and instead of allowing them to attack. So run right at them. So second and nine for the Hornets. Jamal Jackson, lone setback. Drives back to pass. He's got a man. He throws it over. Wow, nice catch there by Marquel Knight. So he ran it the last time, catches it this time, and he's brought down at the 47-yard line. Pick up a 23. Great job there by Marquel Knight. We talked about some of the injuries to guys like Eric Scott. That may have been an Eric Scott-type play where he would go to the middle of the field. We call that an inside post route. Great job there by Kelly delivering it on time in between the defense, getting a gain of 23. Check that. That was a 21-yard pickup, so it'll be first and 10 at the 45. Throws it off. Markwell Knight again caught at the 45 and brought down. Rebobbled that ball just a little bit, and he had to reset himself. 
And that gave the defense enough time to recover on that. And Lorenzo Fields made the tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Once again, the East and West team keeps occurring again. You see the East and West throw behind a line of scrimmage, expecting the receiver to make a play. You cannot bank on that all day long. So you're going to have to continually, like they did on the previous play, take some shots down the field, especially if you have time for Kelly to throw the ball and attack this pirate Mark defense. Marquell Knight, who had the last three touches, checks out as Morris Frazier comes in to give him a breather. Elite Golson goes in motion. Knight's looking for him, but he's got Jamal Jackson wide open in the left flat. Makes a nice move at the, over the 50 and down to the Hampton 45-yard line. What a nice piece of running after the catch. He talk, You talk about playing the Hampton Pirates. He took the treasure right there because he ran over that defender and laid the wood and let him know, you're not going to tackle me. I'm going to try to get this first down. And great job there by Jamal Jackson as he's got an excellent play there. And Joshua Thorne. Yeah, thought he had him lined up initially, but he had to wait until he picked up another seven yards before he could get the tackle. Lamar Shaw checks into the game for the first time, and he's a fullback ahead of Jamal Jackson. They give it to Jackson again. He's hitting the backfield. And again, Joshua Thorne with the hit in the backfield. This Joshua Thorne guy for the Pirates has been everywhere early in this game, tackling Jamal Jackson, tackling Marquell Knight coming after to get Malcolm Kelly. So he's doing a little bit of everything for that power defense, and we still have a stalemate here in the first quarter. So what was a critical third and one? They couldn't get it. They lost one. Brings up a fourth and two, two and Jeremy McGale drops back to his own 38-yard line to punt it out. So what looked promising just kind of fizzled at their own 47-yard line of Hampton. Rashad Riddick is back at his own 10. He catches it at the 10. He's coming up field with it. Hit at the 18 and down. Good coverage down there on the field by Alex Perry. She makes the tackle. Eight yard return. As I always do when the Hornets punt, I hold my breath, hoping that it's not blocked or returned for a touchdown. Great job there overall by the special team, something we haven't said a lot of this year. But McGay, who's been one of the most consistent players on this team, excellent punt. Great coverage there by the punt team, getting after the guy and not allowing a big return. So the third offensive drive by the Pirates. So start off at their own 17. Ball is marked up the left hash. Jarrell Antone trying to get something going offensively for the Hornets. As he's trying a good mix of running and passing the ball. Just kept the Hornets up on their toes to keep an eye on. They give it to Washington in the backfield. He's running left. He's got room up over the 20 and out of bounds at the 21-yard line. He run out of bounds by William Burton. Pick up about five and bring up second five. Last thing the Hornets defense wants to do after two good opening possessions is allow the impact player, Washington, to get going. A nice five-yard run there. Running out of bounds to his visiting friendly sideline of him. Ball on the ground. Antone picks it up, gives it off to Washington, breaks the tackle. He's going to be up over the 28 yard line. Enough for a first down. Ball's going to be marked. We got a late flag coming in from the referee. Waiting to see what the flag was, but a little bit of a fumble there on the snap, but still able to recover and hand the ball off. Yeah. The Pirates are having a little trouble hanging out of that football today. It's the third time that they've put the ball on the ground. Each time they've recovered or they've blown it as down by contact. So the personal foul against the Pirates. We didn't catch a number. Probably a little extracurricular activities after the play. Fleming Williams is having a little trouble with his field microphone. He'll get the first down. He'll get credited for the first down. Then they'll back up the 15 yards. So let's see where the spot's going to be. Now they're going to back it up. It's probably going to be about first and tw 12. Disregard. It's going to be a first and 10. The ball's spotted at the 15-yard line. 
Antone gets it off to a Washington running right up over the 20 and down to about the 23 yard line. Pickup of about eight. Tackle by Alex Perry. There once again it's like we're in a heavy dose of Washington. The Pirates who are capable of throwing the football, coming out running the ball at this one in defense, not running east to west, but running north and south and running at that straight line that I talk about to get to the end zone. Looks like the refs will We're calling for a measure. Measure, yeah. So it looks like it could be close to a first down. So we're bringing out the chains. From our position up here, it looked like he was a little short, but we'll see what referee has to say as he finishes this out. He is going to be short by about a half a yard. Second down, about a foot. Ball is marked at the right hash. Sam Tone looks off to the sideline to get his play. Morris Ball, Broilsford, has also checked into the game, and he's the setback, fullback. We give it over to Washington. He's going to have enough for the first down. Breaks the tackle, and then he's leveled at the 29-yard line. Gabriel Sherrod with the tackle. Washington's ability to make that first initial guy miss is very, very important because looks like the Hornets had him in the backfield, but nope. He hits him with a quick juke move, creates separation for himself, and gets the first down and moves the chains yet again, even after the penalty for the Hampton Powers is about two and minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Brailsford stays in the game. It's the block as they give it off to Washington, but he's hit the backfield. Looks like he's not going to have too much of a gain, if any. That was Dan Zajac with the tackle. Eric Carter Jr. checks into the game as a running back behind Brailsford. So you wonder if Washington's just getting a breather or there might be something up. Brailsford rolls to his right. They give it off to Carter who's hitting the backfield and he's going nowhere. Pirates try to change up the pace there, bringing in a more bigger physical back. Didn't work there because this is a physical dominant on their defense and they were ready for that. Jacob Tizard with the tackle. Washington checks back into the game. So he was just getting a little bit of a breather. So Carter checks back out. Brailsford stays in at the fullback. And torn up under center. He's getting flushed, running right. Looking for a man, but he's going to be tripped up and dropped at the 29-yard line. It's Dan Sajak again with the tackle. That's back-to-back -back tackles for Sajak. Well, I know you might have heard of Pat Sajak. Well, you have Dan Sajak, and he did a great job there tripping up the quarterback. Looks like he was going to try to break the contain and trip him up. Did just enough, and Zajac, I believe, is a freshman, if I'm correct, and he's been doing a great job this season just getting tackles and stops, and he's been a man out there. And you see him pumped up on the sideline. You're right. Six foot two, 220 pound freshman. So Kenny back to punt off to Golson. What a great kick. Golson's going to let it bounce into the end zone. That's a 72 yard punt. That punt was a little bit better than the last one. A little bit too much on Fornet. Creates the touchback. Fornet offense comes out. 0 0 game. Offense has a shot to put points on the board. And really change the momentum of this game as we see it's kind of swinging like a pendulum so we really don't know who's ready to take control of this game right now it shows uh, right now i'm seeing that the pirate offense seems to have a little bit more consistency as they're able to give antone time to roll out he which he tends to like to do he likes to roll out and make his passes as opposed to being a drop back pass while on the other hand Marlon kelly really hasn't had time to set up and really make his plays 
They give it to Jackson. He's up over the 20 and down to the 25 yard line. So a nice, nice little bit of running there by Jamal Jackson. I like the ability of Jamal Jackson to stay consistent. Always keeps his feet moving. That's one thing as a running back. That's where a lot of his strength comes from. Interesting to see if they will open it up like they did last drive and try to take some more shots down the field, even with the balance of Jamal Jackson to keep the defense off balance. Kelly in the shotgun. Throws it right into the ground, short to Malik Golson. That was just a terrible pass at the 20. That was a terrible pass. I would rather Kelly just throw it away if he's going to do that or tuck it and run because with that pass and the ability of Golson in space, you got to give him the ball and give him a chance to make a play because he did have opportunity down the field to make some guys miss. But unfortunately, not the best throw there by Kelly. Kelly more known for his legs than his arm, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Kelly looked like he just really wanted to get rid of that ball way too quick. Opposed to letting the play set up a little bit. Kelly drops back. He's looking to pass. Now he's looking to run. He's got a man that's caught up over the 32-yard line. That's Morris Frazier with the catch. Pick up a 14. Looks like that'll be the end of the first quarter here, Roland. That it is. This quarter's just kind of got by us really, really quick. No really score. a breath of fresh air. We're not used to quarters go by this fast. <laughs> That's true. Normally, we've been up here, it's like, are you kidding me? It's taking this long just to play 15 minutes, but this one really clicked along pretty quick. No score here between the Hornets and the Pirates. And the, so far, it's been, it's been a mixed bag of offense and defense and the defense tends to be playing better on both sides of the field today. Well, as we get ready to start the second quarter here, I mean, it has been a nice pace. We said it in quick, but I think it's been a nice pace kind of steady both defenses have played well a lot of times people don't appreciate a good defensive special teams oriented game because it's a lot of like a chess match but it's actually been a kind of entertaining game so far to see what teams will try to do to switch it up as the Hornets come back out on offense to start the second well the Hornets now moving left to right on the radio dial or west to east based off of the end zone levels First down and 10. Kelly looks back to pass. He's looking for Milton Williams, and he just overthrows him. The ball falls harmlessly at the Delaware State or 25-yard line. One thing about Kelly I would like him to do, I love the attempt to go to Milton Williams even with double coverage, but one thing when you have to realize when they're putting two guys on one individual, especially one as great as Milton Williams, you have the ability to look for guys in one-on-one -on -one matchups underneath in the opponent's defense. I mean, if they're going to double Milton Williams, that means you have one-on-one -on -one opportunities underneath, and someone could be running open. So look to try to offset that with some seam routes or vertical routes down the middle of the field with your tight ends and slot receivers to account for that double coverage down the deep end by the Pirates. Marlon Kelly was 4 for 5, 39-yard passing in the first quarter, and now he's got Malik Golson with a great catch at the 47-yard line, finally dropped down at the 40. 16, 26 yard pickup, but we got a flag in the backfield. It's Might be a whole call, game. but uh, right before I said it, Roland, it's crazy because I just talked about those vertical routes down the middle of the field against this defense, and right there you had Golson wide open, but it will be brought back because of a hold. Dimitri Hill gets flagged with the 10 yard. Surprising because we have a usually a young but disciplined offensive line, and it seems like the past few weeks they've gotten more penalties than we're accustomed to. But it was a great play called there. Maybe I say you attack that the rest of the game with the running of Jamal Jackson, but it was a good play, though, nevertheless. Yeah, Kelly delivered a nice ball, and Golson went up and got it. So bring up second and 20 from the 19. Hornets trying to keep this thing going. Kelly looking again, gives it off to Jamal Jackson, up over the 25 to 30, brought down at the 34-yard line. So a pickup of about 14. third 10 for the Hornet offense so it'll be interesting do they try to attack this defense again with another deep throw we've seen a few of them so far last one called back of holding but coach Blunt is going to have to put this game in Kelly's hand at some point to make some plays with his 
arm as he ties his shoe. Hopefully he's ready to make some plays. So Keller with an empty backfield and four wide receivers to the left. Milton Williams alone, wide receiver down low to the right. And he's looking to run it. Kelly's got a little bit of a seam. Can he get the first down? It doesn't look like he's going to be short by about a yard. So he got it up to about the 43-yard line. He needed to get to the 44, so it'll bring up fourth and one. Check that fourth and two. So Kelly was tying the shoe up as he was ready to run. So I think the defense read that sign and said, we're not going to let this guy get the first down. So they tripped him up, and McGayu comes off for a punt. So Horny Nation, hold your breath. Rashad Riddick drops back at his own 20-yard line. McGayu drops back at his own 26. Now that it looks like they may do a fake. They've changed it up, and sure enough, we'll see. They're going to run the football. And he's not going to get it. He has dropped for a loss. Took too long to develop once they decided to make the change. Snaji Jackson could not get the first down. I like the concept of fake. I did not see that coming. I'm sure no one even saw that coming. But when you do a fake, you have to be, like you said, Roland, up-tempo, get the snap off. And one thing, they did a predictable run where the defense was. I would like to see him maybe drop back and throw the ball, had some opportunities. But it's been a week of fake punts and, you know, special teams in the last week in football. So, Yeah, it just took too long to develop there. If they would have snapped the ball as they were moving, then they probably would have gotten them even more off guard. They're bringing the chains in, but I don't think he got it either. He was short. No need to measure. It wasn't even close. Well, Roland, I think they want to keep us here a little bit longer. They heard us up here talking about how quick this game's been going. So they said every chance we can, we're going to measure, stop the clock, get some TV timeouts, get the people to talk in the PA. So we're getting our wish, I guess. I guess. Great field position for the Pirates. This ball was spotted at the right between the hash marks with the 43-yard line of the Hornets. First time that the Pirates will be in uh, Hornet territory, by the way. Jorian Washington's the lone setback, but they're going to pitch it out. He's got his running back who stumbled coming around the corner. Darius Banks. We have seen a lot of people trip and fall today as if with we call it the turf monster because when guys trip with no one on them, we call it the Turf monster. Guys are just tripping out of nowhere. Yeah, Banks would have kept his footing. He probably had a little bit more. Antone looking to pass. He's got a man. Caught. Rayshon Proctor out there on the right sideline. Nice little timing route there by the Pirates offense. Every offense does this every now and then. A nice time route between the quarterback and receiver. And as soon as the receiver goes to turn, the ball is delivered. As soon as he turns around, it's right in the bread basket for the easy seven yard gain. That's up a third and five. Pick up a five, it'll bring up third and five, so another key third down for the Hornet defense to put the stop here and try to get the offense back out on the field. The tone drops back, he's looking to run, he's gonna run up over the 35, hit at inside the 30, down to the 28. We got a flag at the 40 yard line. Tarek Colston with the tackle. But it looks like it's coming back as we got holding on the Pirates in the backfield. Looks like a hold. I don't think the Hornets were ready for that quarterback to run, but great job there. Yeah, it looks like when Antone drops back, he's looking to run more than he is to pass. Just like a Malcolm Kelly, so kind of a similar type of quarterback we have here. Guys who can run but aren't necessarily looking to throw. So actually it's poetic justice because holding was called on the Hornets last time. They had a great play to Malik Wilson. But last time, now you see the holding on the Pirates, so kind of evens each other out and still a 0 0 game. Yeah, so a nice run there by Antone is nullified by the holding penalty. So that'll bring up a third and 15. Ball is marked at the 48 yard line of the Hornets and spotted at the right hash mark. Tone looks in. It's over the sideline. Get his play. Jorian Washington's the lone setback. Let's see what the Hornets bring defensively. Well, Gabriel Sherrod broke loose. 
Had him there for a minute, but couldn't get him. Rayshad Riddick was the intended target. The ball was a little bit too far out in front of Riddick. That's why I always stress pressure. Pressure doesn't always mean getting a sack, but it means the dismissing or disrupting the timing between quarterbacks and receivers. If he didn't have the pressure there, he would have an easy pitch and catch there. So the pressure there, great job by the defensive line. Just messing up the timing, getting the quarterback off of his spot or his throwing platform, and now forcing the 4th and 15 punt by the Pirates. As the Hornets look like they're going to come and do what people do to them and bring pressure on the punter. Good to see that. Well, Faber Kenny gets the ball away over to Golson, signals the fair catch, brings it up and catches it at the 17. I know it's early rolling, but do you think that the first team to score will win? <laughs> I'm thinking it is. <laughs> if any team scores, they'll win at this point. 35-yard punt there by Kenny. Hornets had a great opportunity. We saw the wide left kick there. Kind of a heartbreaker because you put together such a great job and the defense does an excellent job for you, and it still equates to zero. So hopefully the Hornets can get it going here as they come out of the shotgun. Kelly gives it off to Jamal Jackson. Gets it up to the 20 and down to the 21. So pick up a four. Good little bit of running there by Jamal Jackson. And if you're getting four yards of rush, you'll be a successful offense running the football. I talked about running the football. I talked about the keys to the game running the football. He did an excellent job there. Jamal Jackson, don't know what's going on with the other running backs rolling. A lot of them haven't dressed or they're not on the field. We may see Lamar Shaw every now and then in the short yardage or goal line. But it seems like Jamal Jackson is going to be the guy each and every play. A workhorse doesn't come out. So he's ready to take on that load. I think he's doing a very solid job here getting off to a solid start today. On the defensive side for Hampton, Joshua Thorne has been a linebacker that's been all over the field. Kelly getting flushed, he's getting hit, and he's going to be dropped at the 20. Miles Groom with the sack. So bringing up still a third and seven. Seems like when Kelly has time, he can't find a receiver open. And when call. he doesn't have time, that's when his receivers are available. Exactly. We call that a cover sack. Not necessarily pressure, but just such great coverage down the field. No one was open that ability to get the sack on Kelly. Here comes Thorne. He's coming in. They pick him up. Got the pass off. Hit at the 26 and down at the 26. Marquel Knight with the reception. It's going to be a little short for that first down. I come down a little hard on Kelly every now, but give him credit. He made a heck of a throw there. You saw the pressure as you caught our rolling before the play came. In. Great pickup by the offensive line, and he had to get the ball out quickly, get it to his hot receiver, his hot read. He got it to him on a quick slant in the middle of the field, which has been a weakness of this Pirate defense today watching him. Great job, and I think he should have enough for the first down, but as we've seen, the theme of this game is what? Measure the change. So. I don't think he's even close. I think he's short by about a yard. It's not even close. About a foot. So fourth and a foot. So now the wheels start to turn, and they don't turn long because they put no, they bring the team out. out real quick. I can't fault them for this decision. I think you play to the to the game. It's a defensive game. You put your defense back on the field. Hopefully they got some water, got some Gatorade, and they're ready to go back and get these Pirates. Rashad Riddick drops back at his 29-yard line. Miguel over at his 12. Ball hits the ground, but Miguel makes a nice scoop. Gets it off to Riddick. Let's it go over his Excellent head. And this punt. is going to take a Hornet bounce. Excellent punt. Inside the 5. The Hornets are going to down it at the 2-yard line. So you play the yards. You play the numbers. It's a 0-0 game. Now 47 remaining. That means the Hornet, the Pirates, excuse me, have to go 98 yards to get a touchdown. So 71-yard so punt there by McGay. McGay, I talked about he's been consistent all year. Can we get this guy consideration for Offensive Player of the Year in the MEAC? I mean, I know people don't think about punters, but he's done a great job. One of the guys I keep my eye on week in and week out. Yes, a punter. That's what I do in my spare time. But look at the Hornet defense. I like their chances of being able to stop this Pirate offense and get the ball back to the Hornets with considerable time on the clock. Kermit Blunt's got to be happy with that punt. Kind of flip-flops the field, field position, actually puts it in the Hornet favor right now. I know it's early, but special teams has been a factor of this game. Well, they give it to Washington running out of there, and he's going to pick up about three, get it out to about the five-yard line as the Pirates look to probably play it a little safe trying to get it out. 
pick up a two, check that. Bring up second and eight, ball is spotted at the four yard line. Morris Brailsford is the fullback ahead of Washington. Antone looking, now he's flushed to his left. He's got a man, he throws it out there. It's gonna be close to a first down. Might be a little short. Rayshon Proctor with the catch. It's gonna be about a yard short for the first down. Surprised they didn't measure. They are getting the measurement. So, can someone get me the numbers of the most measurements in one half? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's been so many measurements today that it seems as though every play that's close is getting measured. Right now, we got a Another stoppage in play as they're discussing the spot of the ball and whether they have a first down or not. Whether it's going to be first and ten at the twelve or it's going to be third and less than one. Well, we're waiting for the spot here to see what they're going to do. Looks like it's going to be a tough spot here. Yep, it's a so little short of the 12. They got it at one. the 11 and a half. So it's going to be third and a half. They give it to Washington. That's going to be close. He, was he looks hit. like he was stopped at the line of scrimmage. I think they gave him forward progress up over the 12, though. I think it'll be a first down. Forward progress is an offensive player's best friend. Because just when you think you're stopped, the refs are generous. Talk about giving out gifts, giving out a gift there. It looks like he was stopped, but they did give him the extra forward progress, so they moved the chains here. 8.45 remaining here. Ball is spotted at the 13. Albie Williams with the last tackle. They give it to Washington, run it to the right. He's hit in the backfield, and he's going to be dropped for about a two-yard loss. Talk about fear to swarm. The Hornets' defense is like a swarm, a hornet nest. They swatted those guys right out of the way there. They took the treasure and they stopped them. Looks like a loss of two on the play. Anthony Gamble and Alex Perry with the tackles. Second and 12 from the 11. Ball is on the ground again, but Antone gets it. He's looking to his right, throws to his right. Oh, wow. that was a spectacular catch out there by Proctor. Rayshon Proctor tipped it up in the air. Defensive backs playing with it. Both fall to the ground, and Proctor almost ends up with the football. Looks like it was going to be a free play. Looks like it might have been a false start or a neutral zone infraction, whatever you want to call it. But the play was almost spectacular. You said rolling. Don't, uh, just enough on it to not let the defender get it. Tipping it to himself. Tipping it yet again. Tipping it once again. Baking some cookies, and then almost catches it. But... All in all, incomplete third down and 12. Hornet defense have another chance to get off the field here, Roland. Get off the field and give the Hornets offense a good field position, but that's not going to happen. It's going to be close to a first down. I think Washington's going to have it. He needed 12, and I think he got 12. And just as we talked about saying the praise of the Hornet defense, telling about getting off the field on third down, did an excellent job. Didn't do it here. Allowed the run by the best player on the field, Washington, to get the first down. So it looks like they're going to move the chains here. Well, Jorian Washington checks out of the game. And Eric Carter Jr. checks in. We've seen Carter already earlier in the first quarter. Antone rolling right, looking right. He's being chased by Sherrod. Still has the football and then throws it out of bounds at about the 21 yard line. I so he was no just idea. running by his, for his life. You talk about running with like a chicken with your head cut off. That's what he did there because he scrambled. It looked like he was going to run out of bounds. Like he threw the ball up in the air. Giving away a free T-shirt to the crowd because I don't know what was going on there. Gabriel Sherrod was a man with on a mission there, trying to hunt down Antone. He's second and ten from the twenty-three. They call it an incomplete pass. Hmm. Antone up under center. Brailsford as the fullback. Carter 
He gives it to Carter, cuts it back to the right side, and he's got room up over the 20, 35, the 40. Breaks tackles at the 45, cross midfield, and down to the 44-yard line of the Hornets. Good piece of running there by Eric Carter Jr. Boom, boom, boom. Start up the train because he was rumbling, bumbling there. He just knocked everyone back. Our excellent cutback there, reading one way but cutting back and just taking the ball in the Hornet territory and taking a few Hornets with them. So. Big 33-yard run there by Carter Jr. as he stays into the ball game. Talked about changing the pace back, taking Washington out, and then you bring in another back who can do just as he did. A little bit more powerful, did an excellent job there. Carter going on the left side again. He's hit at the 40 and down at the 38-yard line. As Anthony Gamble came up, made a nice stick at him. This Eric Carter guy, he it takes more than one guy to tackle him, I noticed. Every time he's being touched, it's at least two to three Hornets on him trying to bring him down. He keeps those legs moving, and he's just like a bus. He keeps it going like a truck, a Mack truck. Try to tackle him in open space. It's very hard to do. Well, Washington checks back in as he replaces Eric Carter Jr., the 5'10", 215-pound freshman from the Pirates. Well, they pitch it to Washington, run it left. And he's got plenty of room, but drops the ball, and it's recovered at the 28-yard line. William Womack with the recovery. Thank Thankfully, the Hornets get the turn over there. Great job by the defense. We call this an opportunistic defense. They get it done week in and week out. Just when you think they're about to get scored on or about to give up a big play, they strip the ball. They're playing takeaway, keep away from the powered offense and they will give it back to the Hornet offense. Now the question that we all have been trying to answer this season, can the Hornets do anything to help out this defense that's been playing so hard? Well, the Hornets definitely needed that because Carter and uh, Washington was just starting to pick up their good running game against the Hornets. Kelly drops back a pass, throws it high over the head of Milton Williams, and it almost ended up in the hands of Malik Golson. It looks like it was two people in the area. We really don't know who he was throwing to, but it was a throw there. Actually surprising that the Hornets throw on first down, something they don't do often. They threw it, and looks like it was an incomplete pass. Second and 10 at the 26, ball is spotted at the right hash. Six minutes and 22 seconds left here in the first half. It's the Hornets trying, to, someone's trying to score here. <laughs> Jamal Jackson, the lone setback. Kelly drops back, gives it to Jackson, up over the 25, hit at the 29 and down at the 30-yard line. So good, another good piece of running by Jackson as he picks up close to five yards. He'll bring up a manageable third and six. Talk about third manageable, third and six, third and five. Good run there by Jackson yet again. Something we've seen a lot today from him. Great play call, and now we'll set up a third manageable. Ball is actually spotted at the 30, the right hash. Kelly back in the shotgun, surveying his rounds, looking left, throwing right. And threw it short, he had Jamal Jackson open at the 30. It looked like he might have been able to pick up a first down, but just another poor pass there by Marlon Kelly. Nothing but green space in front of Jackson if he's able to get a better pass from his quarterback. Seems like it's a roller coaster ride with Kelly. Kelly cannot deliver the pass on point, even though it was a flat play. Sets up another Jeremiah McGay punt, unfortunately. Well, Rashad Riddick drops back to his own 19. McGay gets it off at his own 15. What another nice punt there. Over the head of Riddick, who lets it bounce. Let's see where it goes. Another Hornet bounce inside the five. It's going to be down at about the four yard line. Jeremiah McGay for MVP because this guy does it all. I mean, he kicks the ball, and it looks like it was a, a knuckleball, but it just kept carrying and carrying and carrying. And much like a lot of ball packs in the major leagues, ball kept carrying, took a nice bounce for the Hornets. Special teams able to get down there and make them come all the way back from yet again at the five-yard line. So we'll talk about punts inside the 20. This guy does a great punch inside the 10. It's unbelievable, 65-yard punt by Magueo. And Riddick wasn't even close to catching that ball. It just right sailed over right head. over his head. Yep. He was like, I don't, I don't want any part of that. Maybe one of the best decisions he's made in his young life. <laughs> Two setbacks, that's Brailsford and Washington. And they're going to give it to Washington, running right, and he's got room. 
up over the 5, up to the 10, over the 10, out of bounds at the 15-yard line. So where they were at once in trouble at the 5, now it looks like they're going to be close to a first down at the 15. Really close to a first down. If it wasn't for the out of bounds line, he would have still been running, and we would have probably been calling a touchdown for Hampton, but you got to see what happens. Wow. I didn't see the flag, but there was a hold on the Hampton Pirates, so it's going to bring it back. So as you talk about, they got the first down. They don't have the first down. There's a hold, so. So we first and 12 is we have distance to the goal, so ball will be marked at the two. Give it to Washington, who was hit at the six, bounced, broke a couple of tackles. Wow. Then bounced it outside, made it up over to the 18-yard line. That reminds me of a video game I used to play called Madden. And when you do that, you keep wiggling the analog stick until you break free of the defender. And he did that there because it looked like he was upended by the defensive line, and he just kept moving those feet. And you think about a little guy like that. That's why these guys do squats in the gym, do all types of things with the weights from the legs on up and the calf muscles because – that was an excellent play there by Washington, and that's why he's an impact player because this when you think you got him down, he comes back right back at you. So first and 10 for the Pirates. They give it to Washington again and brings it up over the 20 and down to the 21. So pick up of about three. Bring up second and seven. Give it to Washington again, up over the 25 and down to the 26. So pick up of another three, it'll bring up a third and two. So one of the things that this game has been third down conversions and third down stops. The Hornet defense has done a very solid job so far. It'll be interesting to see if they can get another stop to give this offense ample time to run their offense as we get closer to halftime. Three minutes and 50 seconds left here in the first half. In a scoreless ball game from Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware. Antoine looking to pass. He had a man. He just ran out of time back there. His intended re receiver was TJ Mixon. Great job to see this Hornet pressure being ratcheted up a bit as we progress through this game. Great pressure there by the defensive line. They're taking on these powers off the line and then balling them to the side and getting after this quarterback. Making him a little uneasy back there in the pocket. Make him scramble and coming after him. Now they will punt. And the Hornets looks like they will have solid field position with three minutes and 30 seconds remaining until halftime. Faber Kinney drops back at his own 11. Malik Golson at his 35. Kinney gets the ball off. It's wobbling. Hits the ground at about the 45. They're waving to get over. It's going to bounce out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. So the Hornets are going to end up with some good field position. With a 20 with a 30-yard punt there by Faber Kenny. First and 10 at the 44-yard line. With three minutes and 24 seconds left for the Hornets, and the Hornets have two timeouts left here in the first half. Marlon Kelly trying to get something going offensively in this scoreless ball game. Running the ball is still an option with 3.30 left in the half, but they're going to throw it. Well, Kelly's got time. He's looking, still looking. Come, hits at Milton Williams. They're waving him out of bounds is what they're waving. Wow, I'd like to take a look at that. It looked like his knees were both in, and the elbow wasn't out of bounds yet. Definitely a tough play. Would like to maybe see that again, but might a bend in bounds. Bring up second and 10 from the 44. Kelly had some time there. He scrambled around, finally found a Milton Williams who was coming back, but they ruled him out of bounds. Empty backfield for Kelly. The Hornets try to get something going offensively. They're having trouble converting, getting first downs. Kelly breaks a tackle. It's going to be hit and dropped at the 49. So pick up of about five will bring up a third and five on what looked like a design quarterback run. They've been doing a lot, spreading out with five of our receivers, and Kelly has been taking it himself with 
the quarterback draw. He is a capable runner, so the defense does have to account for that. So a lot of times what that does is help set up passes later on in drives and in the game because the defense will take a man out of coverage and put him on spine and keeping the quarterback in check. And maybe here Kelly can make some throws down the field. As there looks like there are linebackers matched up on some of these speedy receivers, so have to take advantage of the mismatches here. We haven't seen that slant route but one time. There it is, the Malik Golson. He had him, and he just led him too much. That was a first down, and that was the pass they needed to complete. It was right Definitely there. needed to convert that there. Now they will punt it yet again, and there will be a two-minute drill for the Hampton Powers. Like you said, you call for the slant route. You got it. It was there. It's been there all day. It's not the best of throws there by Kelly. So Rashad Riddick drops back at his own 10. McGill going to try to pin him deeper. McGill has a little trouble with the ball, gets it off to Riddick. He comes up to field it and lets it go over his head and it takes another horn at bounds. Should count it at the one yard line. Referees will confer here. First down at the one yard line. Jeremiah McGill. Great job. I mean, what? I run out of adjectives for this guy. He's been excellent. I need to shake his hand because he has been one of the positive bright spots in a tough season on offense and special teams. I mean, what can he not do? Can he catch a pass? Can he throw a pass? Because he may be able to do that and help this team out. Maybe even throw it to himself or kick it to himself <laughs> and catch it and run it back because we need it at this point. 49-yard punt there as they're going to spot it at the two, and this guy has just been kept the Hornets right in the ball game with his punting capability. And people forget about the importance of special teams. I talk about it week in and week out, and – Beat it like a dead horse, but it's been excellent today. He did even bobble the punt like you said, Roland, but he just recovered so effortlessly and just made an excellent punt. Great job by the coverage team and getting it to the one-yard line. Now they will have to, looks like, go 99 yards with about two, 23 remaining here Looks in like halftime. the majority of the Pirate team is on the field. I think they're trying to discuss where the ball should have been marked, whether it should have been a touchback or whether the ball should have legally been at the two. The ball was definitely touched at the two. It'll be interesting to see that if they, because if a player's body is in the end zone, it's a touchback. So. This isn't the NFL where the body, you can't carry the ball or any part of the body into the end zone and make it an automatic touchback. It's where the ball is initially stopped. Where it's touched is where the ball's going to be marked. Yep. We were kind of curious how the punting game was going to go this year with Marco Cano graduating, but they haven't missed a beat. Have not missed a beat. They've been just as good, if not better, in the punt game. And I think that McGay, you talk about things you look for on the team. You don't necessarily say punter, but things like field position and punting in a game like this, a defensive game, 0-0, zero, zero, change of field position. Punt is just as good as points in this situation because the way the defense playing, I'll take my chances. Exactly. I, I mean, Miguel has just kept them off the board. So after three hours of conferencing with the whole Hampton Pirate offense, I mean, I don't know why they were all on the field. Half of those guys don't even play, but they will have the ball for the two. First and ten at the two. Antone up under center. He's got Brailsford as the fullback and Washington in the backfield. They give it to Washington. He's hit at the three. And that's where he's going to go down, is at the three. Alex. L.B. Williams with the tackle. It's the Hornets called their second timeout to try to keep some play clock available if they can get the ball back. Two minutes and 16 seconds left here in the scoreless game. Two sixteen remaining second and nine. It'll be interesting. Does Hampton try to come out and maybe move the ball if they're throwing, or do they risk incomplete passes and stop the clock so the Hornets don't have to use their timeouts and they can get the ball back with I think their full array of timeouts. So a little bit of a coach's decision here to see what they might do. Yeah, that's definitely been a an offensive struggle. Hampton has accrued sixty yards and the Hornets forty five. So. Yeah. 
Second and nine from the three. Hornets with one timeout left. And tone under center. We got movement of 78 fired off a little bit early. Ronald Rose. We'll see if he was drawn off. It's offsides against the Hornets. So big mistake there by the Hornets to give the Pirates a little bit of breathing room. Big mistake there by the Hornets. You had a chance to keep this offense spraying out yet again. Possibly get a punt and have a good chance to score possibly before the half. But they give it to Washington. Plus Breaks the tackle at the 10, gets himself close to the 15. He's going to have a first down. That's going to stop the clock momentarily as they move the chains, but more it's going to get the clock moving again, eating up some of that offensive time. Now the wheels may be turning a bit for the Hampton offense. Do they continue to run, or do they maybe try to throw the ball to get further down the field quickly? Well, Antone rolls off to his left, throws to his left, and has a man. That is Rayshon Proctor with the catch. He's run out of bounds at about the 26-yard line. Another first down by the Pirates as they're trying to get their offense moving before the first half finishes A little, out. A little deception there by the Pirates coming out in a run formation, but actually quarterback spraying to his left and making a nice throw. As we've seen, he's been very comfortable throwing outside the pocket rather than in the pocket. So. We give it to Washington. Up over the left side, breaks a tackle at the 30 and run out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. William Burton ran him out. You see Washington. Will, Willie Bolden had a chance to get him in the backfield. You see Washington taking his time there, not rushing, allowing his blocks to set up down the field. The patience of Washington. Then hitting that second level, getting into his second gear, defining the sideline, smart play, as it will stop the clock and let the power offense set up. Antone looks off to right, he throws right, he's got his man caught at the 45-yard line, out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. T.J. Mixon with the catch. Pick up of about seven, and bring up second and three. As the ball is marked right between the 45 and 46-yard line. Brailsford check, checks out. They give it to Carter, who has checked into the game. He's up over the 50, across the 45. Look out at the 20, the 15, the 10. Hit at the 5 and out of bounds at the 4-yard line. Devon Moore finally came over and pushed him out of bounds. But another big run by Eric Carter, Jr. For a big guy, this Carter kid can move. He was started off to his right, went back to his left. Thought about where he was going to go next and just put on a little bit of the afterburners. He was eventually caught by Devon Moore, but... Great job there by Carter Jr. to hit the second level and run the football effectively. And Carter just breaking tackles for 51 yards to bring it down inside the five-yard line of the Hornets. And this Washington-Carter combination, probably one of the better two combo backs in the MIA. Carter just punched it in from four yards out to put the Pirates up on the board six to nothing with one minute and 22 seconds left here in the first half. So right on cue, you see these guys come back, the 22 punch. I guess we can call it lightning and thunder because you have one that's quick and you have one that's going to leave a boom, and that's what uh, Carter did on that drive. Two big runs, the one culminating in a touchdown, so great job there. Anthony Previs to attempt the extra point. Kick is up. And it is no good as he hooked it to the left. Pirates on a 98-yard touchdown drive. With one minute and 22 seconds left, the Pirates lead the Hornets 6-0. Pretty impressive 98-yard drive there by the Pirates. Pretty impressive. And you go back and think about that penalty, the, the offsides that definitely set up this ability for the Pirates to get an opportunity to move the chains, and then you saw the big run there. Another a nice run by Washington. Then you see the two big runs by Carter. The missed field goal, or extra point as you want to call it, may come back and haunt the Pirates if the Hornet offense can find a way to get in the end zone. Well, last week we know that at half, current blunt swap quarterbacks out. Is that something you would be thinking about doing in the second half? Do you think Gilbert Rivera can put a spark to get the offense going? They're having trouble getting first down. The thing, if you do that, the Hornet, the, the Hornets will have a 
subtraction by addition because Rivera can now run like Kelly can, but Rivera may be the better of the throwers. But we saw last week Rivera come in with a lot of crucial turnovers, so it'd be interesting to see. So Anthony Prevos puts the boot into it. It's brought down at the 12-yard line, coming back with it. Up over the 25 and down to the 29-yard line is Jordan Smith. So the Hornets with one minute and 16 seconds left and one timeout remaining. Try to get something going offensively before this half finishes up. What you don't want to do is another quick three and out and get the ball back to the Pirates because right now they're pretty confident running the football. That running offense is very hot right now. And one thing to think about is early in this game, the Hornets had an easy field goal opportunity. They missed that. So it will be a 6-3 to three game right now. So kind of something that looms and something you think back on as you look back over a game, especially at the first half. So well, Kelly, again, I'm one of those design quarterback draws is hitting the backfield, and he's dropped. As Robert Copeland came in, busted that all up, and just sacked him. Clock continues to roll. Bring a second and 14. As Hampton Pirates have called timeout. So as we said, we don't want to quit three and out. They give up a sack on first down, and second and 14, Hampton can call the timeout. Still having two timeouts remaining. So, and a minute and seven left here in the first half. That is a good amount of time. The Pirates are thinking about scoring. Kelly's still in an empty backfield with a shotgun, so it doesn't look like the Hornets are going to go conservative. They're going to try to at least complete get the first down. Kelly hits Milton Williams on a wide receiver screen. Williams coming back to the ball, comes up hobbling. As he was hit immediately, and dropped. The Pirates again calling timeout. If I'm Milton Williams, I'm going back to the huddle, fussing out my quarterback because you set me up for failure there. That was a horrible throw. Throw the ball 20 feet up in the air. We know Milton Williams is a great athlete, but you set him up for failure because that allows him to be an open target to the defender. And it looks like he's a little bit hobbled coming off the field. You know defenders now have to go low, so they attack the legs of a tall guy, and that could be an injury that could come back to haunt the Hornets, and you see Milton Williams hobbling. Yeah, last week against in North Carolina, a t Williams went out with a with a bad hand, never came back in late in the game, and now he's hobbling on that right leg. Don't know whether we have a knee or an ankle. He is not in for this third down conversion. One minute and three seconds left here in the first half on this third and 12. Jamal Jackson checks in as the lone setback behind Kelly. Hornets may just try to run this football. They don't. Kelly drops back to pass. He's looking. He's got a mass. Malik Golson caught for the first down. The clock will stop as they move the chains, but it's going to be first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Hornets trying to get something going with 55 seconds left here in the first half. Kelly drops back to pass. He's throwing. He's got Golson caught and hit after a pickup of three. Lorenzo Fields came up and just laid out Malik Golson after he made the catch, and Golson still on the ground. Woo, woo. You talk about laying out somebody, we call that a hit state because that is a momentum shifter there, and it looks like he is still down after that hit, so he got his bell on a little bit there, and that may be a momentum killer right there with 40 seconds left in the first half. Pick up a three by Golson. They're getting trainers have gotten him up. He's walking out under his own power. Nice catch by Golson, but man, oh man, did he pay the price for that catch. And if I'm a teammate, I'm not patting him on the head because he could have a concussion with all these concussion protocols. That's one thing I would not want to be doing. What a
think if they would not have taken that time out with that injury happening in less than two minutes of the game, they probably would have done a 10-second runoff. So Kermit Blunt's thinking, I need that 10 seconds more than anything else. So, so the Hornets are out of timeouts here in the first half. The ball is marked at the 48-yard line. So it was second and seven for the Hornets with 40 seconds left. Trailing six to nothing to the Hampton University Pirates. Milton Williams is back in the game, so that's a good sign to see him out. But Golson, of course, is going to be on the bench at least to play. As Marquel Knight comes in to replace Golson. Well, Kelly drops back to pass. He's looking over the middle, and it's intercepted at the 42-yard line. Keith McAfee just picked it off, and I don't know what Kelly was. What was he thinking? I don't know what he saw. He saw nothing. He saw a pirate that he threw the ball to, and he gave his treasure right back, and they took it right there because I cannot explain that throw there. You're sitting right there reading the quarterback's eyes and uh, talk about a gift, talk about giving things away for free. He did that there, and unfortunately, Pirates will have time with a timeout left. 30 seconds of time to attack this Hornet defense yet again. Yeah, this is not what the Hornets wanted to do with the football, was to give it right back to the Pirates. First and 10 at the Hornet 41. They still have one timeout left, and Antone's looking to throw it, and he does. Gets it off to Jorian Washington. But what great coverage by Alex Perry. He read that play and brought down Washington for about a four-yard loss. Great job there by Perry reading the screen and shooting out of the cannon with an excellent tackle. That's textbook defense right there. That's what you want. Washington was open. Perry just laid him out. Bring up a second and 14. You make the Pirates burn their last time out. What? With 19 seconds left here in the first One half. One thing about these Hornet linebackers, they have a lot of them that they rotate in and out, but these guys are fast and quick to the ball. I think their ball skills are second to none. You see that ability to react on plays of screens and short passes and make tackles in space. A lost art in football in general, the ability to tackle one-on-one -on -one situations, tackle creative, quick, agile players in space. Excellent job there by the linebacker for the Hornets to be solid in this game. Yeah, you've had Alex Perry, Albie Williams, Dan Sajak, and Kareem Lever just really stepping it up and putting the hits out there. It makes a big difference for this defense. Well, they give it to Washington, up the middle, and he's got some room. Cuts it over at the 35. What a play. Finally hauled down at the 19-yard line by Alex Perry as that Jory and Washington sure can run the football. That may be a touchdown saving tackle, but they're going to try to spike the ball real quick. And he does with nine seconds left, so that stops the clock. There's no timeouts left for the Pirates, so you've got to wonder how many shots they're going to take in the end zone because they can't really run the football unless they think Jordan Washington can score on this one because they're not going to get another play. So Antone's looking to throw. He's got a man who right off the fingertips wow. in the back of the end zone. Wide open in the middle of that Hornet defense, and it was a little bit outside of the reach, but a good catch there. Saquon Goody. <laughs> The last time we had called Gooding's n number was when he brought back the opening kickoff. So now, Prevost is going to attempt a 36-yard field goal. Ball is spotted at the left hash. Now, Prevost has missed a extra point. Let's see. Kick is up. And it is no good. Looked ball good. Ball wide to the left. It looked good, but no good kick. Well, he had enough height and distance on it. He just didn't get the accuracy and put it in between the pipes. So, big break there for the Hornets at the end of the half. So, Hampton University or Hampton University Pirates lead the Delaware State University Hornets six to nothing. As now, inept as this uh, offense has been. They only down six to nothing. Defense has held it down. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the second half. Coach Bond to tell us team. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short break here. 
from up in the booth, Byron and I will, and we'll be back to bring you the second half and some stats prior to that. But right now, please enjoy the halftime show that's about as they recognize breast cancer awareness participants. And both the bands will be on hand. One from Hampton, one here from Delaware State University. Thank you, and we'll be back. To all of our breast cancer survivors here in attendance today, Joseph Lawler makes some noise for all of the breast cancer survivors in attendance today. We are so grateful that you have joined us here today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you, breast cancer survivors. Once again, show some love for our breast cancer survivors who have joined us and alumni standing today. On behalf of the entire Delaware State University family, including many of our student athletes who are here. Now, all of you are wearing pink today. Please stand up wherever you are. Stand up in the crowd. Anyway, if you're wearing pink, thank you for your dedication and your commitment to raising awareness in the fight against breast cancer. Let me know. I want to show you how much we love you. And we're grateful that you have joined us here today. And finally, fans. Many of us have lost members of our family due to breast cancer. At this time, I want to ask for a quick moment of solid reflection for all of our loved ones, family, and friends who have lost to breast cancer. Thank you. Once again, show some love for all of our breast cancer survivors here today. Tell them what it's going to do. Thank you for joining us today. I'm here with the athletic director, Candy Young. Candy Young, why is breast cancer awareness so important for the Hornets? Well, it's not only important to the Hornets. I have two sisters who are breast cancer survivors. So I think cancer is something that touches on everybody's family, everybody's life. And as the Hornet family, we just want to recognize those who have survived, who have met the challenge of dealing with uh, breast cancer. And it's just important to athletics that we understand that even though you may not be fighting in a sport, that you're fighting in some facet of life. Uh, what can a DSU student or alumni do to help spread awareness? I think what we can continue to do is, like I said, it touches every family. So when we're helping those family members, just the education component of it, to be aware, to understand that everybody is getting their proper mammograms, that they're getting their checkups. So make sure the edu education component is very strong. Uh, switching gears, how do you, what do you think about the football game so far? Well, it, our football season has been pretty rough without our lead quarterback. We're using our second and third string quarterback. I know our offensive line uh, doesn't look the way that I would like to see it look without um, the support of having a great quarterback to lead the team. But our defense, I think, is doing an awesome job. And uh, you never want to say that the kids are doing poorly because they work very hard every day. So we're here to continue to support them in every game. And I hope it just gets a little bit better for us each time around. Um, in terms of fan support, because of last week's loss, we're not seeing a great turnout in terms of uh, students. How do you get the students back involved with the football team? Well, I think 
the students um, just have to think about what's important not only to them but what's important to the university and when we can step out and prove that athletics is a, com a, a key component in the university and the students don't necessarily go home for the weekend spend some time and really get to learn more about the institution so getting students to buy in to the institution and supporting I think will really help us. Our diehards have regrouped, they're doing a great job. Uh, SGA I think is doing a great job to try to keep our students around. Homecoming is different, everybody comes home for homecoming so it's a different component but finding the right thing to uh, make all the students just stick around and support our kids, uh, it would be great. You know if you have any suggestions let me know. Um, the basketball team definitely had to support their fans towards the end of the season as they play much better. Uh, what's your expectations for them for the upcoming season? Well, both programs. I think we're going to see some exciting things happening with our basketball programs. Our men's program have definitely made a huge turnaround. Uh, Coach has brought in some great incoming talent to uh, to be with the current talent that we have and just moving those, those groups forward. Uh, our women's team has brought in some really excellent recruits. And so I think we're going to see some fun things happening with our program. I think if you don't come out, you're really going to miss some exciting basketball this year. I uh, Thank you for the interview. It was a pleasure. I, I really thank, th thank you so much. Great to be here. All right, back to the bands. This is me signing off on a sideline with Miss Candy Young.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the WDSU Television. We're just about ready to start the second half here. The Hornets trail the Pirates of Hampton six to nothing. Byron, looking over these stats, what's really standing out to you about this? Well, Roland, one thing that has stood out to me in the first half of a six to nothing game: the Hornets' rush defense has given up two. That's right, two 100-yard rushers in the first half. We all, I talked about Jordan Washington coming to the game at 17 carries for 118 yards. And then Eric Carter, the guy they bring in when Washington needs some rest, the big back who gets into the second gear to take off for seven carries, 400 yards, and he has that touchdown along of 51 yards, averaging 14.3 yards a carry. So kind of surprising the Hornet defense giving up not only one 100-yard rusher, but two 100-yard rushers in the same half, and they're fortunate to only be down 6 nothing rolling. 
Yeah, six to nothing. They are very fortunate to be down by that. Uh, as Prevost gets ready to tee it up. He's going to kick it off. Jamal Jackson and Jordan Smith stand back at their own five waiting on the ball. Prevost may need to have somebody come in here and hold it if the wind won't play nice with our football. So far it's staying up on the tee. And Anthony Prevost, a five foot six hundred and fifty pound sophomore, is about ready to lay the foot into it. And his nice pick orange shoes. Ball is up and it's gonna bounce out of the end zone. So it'll be a touchback and the Hornets will take over for the first drive here in the second half. First and ten at their own twenty-five. I think what you know, we talked about it early on and whether we would have a quarterback change. Well, I'm seeing Gilbert Rivera march out there for the first drive, so sure enough. Marlon Kelly's going to start the second half on the bench, and Gilbert Rivera's going to be given the opportunity to give a spark to this Hornet offense. Like you said, Roland, they're looking for a spark. We talked about it before the halftime, and it seems like for the second straight week, Gilbert Rivera will be under center to start the second half. Last week he struggled, throwing two crucial interceptions. Well, Rivera gives it first off to Jamal Jackson, who breaks the tackle and gets five yards before he's brought down at the 30-yard line. Nice little run there, brought down by Tyrone Ward at the 30-yard line. Well, the Hornets really need to get something going. They were, uh, Hampton had 13 first downs to the Hornets, four in the first half. So you definitely want to improve on that number. Definitely want to improve on that role. Like you said, can't be giving up that many first downs. It's surprising that the Hornet defense gave up 13 first downs. They give it to Jackson again. Stutter steps at the 25. He's going to pick up one before he's driven back. Robert Copeland with the tackle. Assisted by Owen Abensui. So, already for Gilbert Rivera, his first third down attempt, and it's going to be a third and three as the ball is marked at the 32. It'll be interesting to see, does the offense put the ball in Gilbert Rivera's hand to make plays as we see the Pirate defense can in on that running of Jamal Jackson and we see an open five receiver set. Rivera not the runner that Kelly is, so he will probably have to throw to get the first down. So Rivera's looking right. Still, now he's going to get hit in the backfield and he's brought down at the 28-yard line. The ball is loose and it looks like Hampton may have it at the 30-yard line. Copeland made a hit. Robert Copeland hit him. They have jarred the ball loose. We're still waiting to see who made the recovery. And it's going to be fourth down. The Hornets have it. So Keon Williams with the recovery of the Gilbert Rivera fumbles. He was hit from behind trying to convert that third down. So not the best start for the Hornets here in the second not half. Not the best step, st start, excuse me. Fortunately, that the Hornets did not give the ball away on that fumble, and they got it back. Miguel gets off a good punt. Riddick fields it at his 35. Stutter steps. Now he's going to lose five. Rashad Riddick fielded it, and he's going to lose about five yards on that one. First time Riddick was able to catch a Miguel punt all day, but not the best choice as the Hornet coverage team got down there quickly, and they pushed him back. Great job there by the special team, something they've been doing well all day. Besides well, the missed field goal. First and 10 for the Pirates at their own 33. 13 minutes and 14 seconds left here in the third quarter. We're just underway here in the second half. Hornets trail the Pirates 6 to nothing. So it'll be key for the Hornets here to see if they can stop that 1-2 running attack of Jorian Washington and Eric Carter Jr. Washington will get the start in the backfield. As Darrell Antone gives it off to Washington. Breaks a tackle, but he's really going to be just lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Rodney Gunter with the tackle. Give him one. He'll bring up second and nine. Antone looking to pass left. He's got a man. He throws it behind him. That was a sliding Rayshad Riddick. The ball falls incomplete at the 38-yard line. So a big third down now for 
for the Pirates, third and nine. The Hornets looking to make a stop and get the ball back. Be interesting to see what the Hornets do on third down here. They've been doing a great job defensively. Maybe they'll try to bring some pressure. And well, here's what we do know about Antone. He's not afraid to run the football on third and long. He's done that with Carter. He's done it with Washington. But this time he's going to run it himself as he brings it straight up the middle. Hit. Bounces off to the left. Now he's going to may have gotten it. Devon Moore actually came up and made a great tackle because it looked there for a minute that he was going to turn it up and get the first down. Great job there calling by you, Roland, because you talked about his ability to run much like Kelly does. But uh, he's still in the game. He's making an impact. Almost was able to get the first down there, but great job by Devon Moore. Haven't called his name a lot today, but still his ability in that secondary position to come up and make plays like that. So a big stop for the Hornets. Brings up a fourth and two. And Faber Kenny drops back at his own 26. Malik Golson shielding his eyes for the ball. He gets off a booming kick. Faber Kenny does. Wow. Let's see, did it bounce out at the one or is it a touchback? No, they're marking it at the one yard line. That so is what a nice kick a there by Faber Kenny. That is a good punt that you will see. They're going to give it a touchback. They are going to call it a touchback. It was mighty close down there in that far corner of the end zone. So it'll be first and 10 at the 20 for the Hornets. As Gilbert Rivera comes out for his second drive, see whether it can be a little bit better than the first. Kevin Jocelyn checks in at running back along with Jamal Jackson. And they give it to Jackson running to the right. Breaks a tackle over the 20. He's going to pick up about one before he's run out of bounds by Joshua Thorne and Keith McAfee. Give him one, second and nine for the Hornets, trying to get something going. Anything. You see a little bit of a two-back set there, but giving the ball to Jamal Jackson, a little bit of a predictability league aspect to this Hornet offense. Maybe they need to switch it up and put the ball in Rivera's hand. They're going to have to throw the ball to win this game. That's as clear as cut and dry as it can be. Well, Rivera drops back to pass. He's got a man, throws it over the middle, and it's caught there by Joseph Saravolo. That's going to be good enough for the first down. That's going to move the chains as he's dropped at the 31. So, like I was saying, Rivera's going to have to make some throws with his arm. He's done that. He's not the runner Kelly is, but he is able to throw the ball if he has some time. So, I want to see him maybe take advantage of this middle of the field. This is where the Pirates' weakness has been on defense. They have good linebackers against the run, but in coverage you have some mismatches with the ability of the receivers that we have on the offensive side. Well, pick up a 10 for Saravolo. Lamar Shaw checks into the backfield, but they're going to give it to Jamal Jackson, the second back through. Maybe he picks up one. So he's brought down there by Charles Owens. The big nose guard at 96. Charles Owen, a six foot one, 312 pound senior. That's a big man anchoring that defensive line for the Pirates. That is as big as a human being as you will see at any level. Wow, Saravolo again was open. He just dropped the football. He would have had a pickup of a minimum of nine. May have even gotten a first down. He just dropped the ball there, Byron. He, I think he heard a little bit of the footsteps of the defensive back there, ready to lay the wood on him. He dropped the pass, a great pass there by Rivera. Unfortunately, receivers have to catch the ball for it to be a completion, and uh, you got to pick your quarterback up there. Not the best job by Saravolo after just making the catch, so he'll come out the game, and uh, maybe no, that looks at like Milton Williams here. It's not that Saravolo gets a lot of targets. But so when you get those targets, you got to make the coaching staff say, hey, you know, I need to stay in this football game. That's right. So a big third down. They give it to Jamal Jackson, who's hitting the backfield, maybe struggles forward for one before he's brought down by Miles Grooms. Not the best play call. I really don't agree with that play call there. They run a draw play on third and nine. The run game hasn't really been there all day. You have to take some shots. I mean, Mill Williams maybe has two targets all day, and third and nine, you don't even try to get it to one of your best players on the field. It's kind of a tough well, Ray decision. Rashad Riddick back at his 30. Miguel got some pressure, but he got the punt off, and he's going to get hit. Ball is on the ground. 
Did he come up with it? He did. Back at the 25 yard line. That's the fourth time the Pirates have put the ball on the ground, but they've gotten it back each time. Good coverage down there by the Hornets. Great coverage, as we've said. I've seen a lot today. The special teams unit on the punting side has been good. Great punts by McGay, like we've seen all year. And the coverage, not allowing these returners to really get their hands on the ball and make any sort of impact. So a 44-yard punt. So Jarrell Antone checks back in. Jorian Washington in the backfield. He's going to throw left. He's got a man caught and up over the 31 yard line. That's T.J. Mixon with the catch. Brought down there by Malik Harris. Bring up a second and two after a gain of eight. The ball's spotted at the 33 yard line. Hornets showing a little pressure from the linebackers. They're going to come with it. They give it to Washington, who's hitting the backfield, and he's got nothing. Brought down there by Kareem Lever. More of the greatness of these linebackers bringing pressure. I would like to see a little bit more of that as the game progresses because that was a great job there of bringing a little pressure, overwhelming this offensive line a little bit, and getting the stop. Well, Washington did pick up one, so bring up a third and one. As Morris Brailsford checks back in at the fullback, so probably use the big fella to open up a little bit of a gap for Washington on this crucial third down. He's got the first down up over the 40, pushing towards about the 44-yard line before he's driven back there. Devon Moore with the tackle. But that moves the chains. And they get a fresh set of downs at the 44-yard line of the Pirates. Well, Eric Carter Jr. checks in to give Jory and Washington a breather. And there's been no stopping this big fella. Has not been, and I think he may get the ball here. Pretty safe call. I'm thinking he does. Nope, they fake it to him. And now Antone is rolling right, throwing right, and he's got a man that's caught at the 20. At the 10, the 5. He will score. Rayshon Proctor broke free over the middle, and nice pitch and catch there by Antone to Proctor. We talked about being unpredictable in offense. We bring in Eric Jun Carter Jr. Everyone thinks it's going to be a run. They do an excellent job, a little bit of a gadget play, a trick play, faking the play, the handoff, then faking the reverse, and you have a wide-open man on a deep post across the middle of the field. Deval Moore gets beat. He bites on the fake. Have a wide open attack and a touchdown. It's something we've talked about with this Hampton team, and they've been able to do it. The extra point is cut, and the Pirates now leave the Hornets 13 to nothing. Yeah, that was just a great play call. Zantone faked the Carter on the dive, then he faked the TJ Mixon on the end around, and then he just found Proctor cutting across the middle of the playing field. And and what now, a strike. And now everybody is wondering, can the Hornets offense score 13 points to even up this game? Yeah, that's a big question because right now the Hornets have not been able to do anything offensively. Well, for them to win, they're going to have to get at least 13 to tie it up, so 14 to win. And, I mean, the defense will have to hold, but it'll be interesting to see. Still have time, 734 remaining in the third quarter, so. Jamal Jackson, Jordan, Jordan Smith back at their, inside their 10, getting ready to receive this thing from Prevost. Ball is up and away, coming down to Jackson. He's going to let it bounce out of the end of the end zone. So there'll be a touchback, and the Hornets will start first and 10th or 25. Right now the crowd is just kind of sitting. They're not sitting on their hands, Roland. Not really doing much of anything. They're kind of like stunned at what they've seen so far. Twiddling their thumbs. It's just been an offense that's been sputtering. Defense can only do but so much for an offensive team. It's only one facet of three. Special teams have been pretty solid today. Offense has been not as good. Defense has been solid as usual, but got to get something going if you're on offense here. 
Well, we got movement on the interior line. It's going to be a false start on the offense. As Darren Helwig pulled up a little bit early. Oh, I'm sorry. First and ten, first and fifteen now for the Hornets. That fifty-six yard bomb uh, from uh, Jarrell Anton to Rashawn Proctor for fifty-six yards now gives Proctor eighty yards on a day with that touchdown. So. Everybody joining the party. Yeah. Two 100-yard rushers so far, and now we got a wide receiver getting ready to eclipse the 100-yard and receiving. Gilbert Raffaire going deep to a Milton Williams. Can he get there? He can't. Just overshot a streaking Milton Williams down there. His Lamarte outing was there on the coverage, and he had pretty good coverage on Williams. You wonder why the Hornets don't do that more. You have to at least take a couple of shots down the field to Milton Williams on the course of a game. Anything can happen. A pass interference call, a defensive holding, an illegal contact, or what about this? He'll catch the pass. He's the best receiver on the team. You have to give your opportunities to your best players and your playmakers to make a play. Yeah, outing's a six foot, 180 pound junior. He had good coverage back there in his free safety position. So they fake the pass. Now they throw it out to Milton Williams, who's hit at the 21. So he's going to pick up about one. He's going to bring up a long third and 14, brought down there by Keto Jordan and a host of others. Yeah, a host of others. They knew Milton Williams. They would probably go back to him on the next play. They certainly did there, and it just did not work out for them there. wonder why they threw the ball so short there, but I think they need to take another shot. So you got left to rely on is Mill Williams on his offense. So, so an empty backfield for Gilbert Rivera. She's trying to get something going. This Hornet offense has just been not good, to put it nicely. Throws it over the middle and nobody was there. He just threw it long. It looked like some of the guys had pulled up short on their routes and the ball just fell luckily harmlessly at the 45-yard line. Well, that could have been another turnover. Could have been an interception. Looked like he may have had a ghost in a little bit open, but he overthrew it, like you said, and the Wolves continue for the Hornet offense. Yeah, Miguel's going to have to drop back to his own five-yard line, barring any type of penalty or anything. The Pirates should end up with some pretty good field position after this. Rashad Riddick drops back at his 40. A little bit of pressure, but Miguel gets it off, end over end kick. Riddick's got it at the 43, and that's where he made the fair catch. So it'll be first and 10 for the Pirates at their 43-yard line. They got pretty good field position as they take over. So if you're the Hornet defense, what do you think here? I mean, you have to probably say, well, offense can't score. We're going to have to go out and score points ourselves, and it's easier said than done. Exactly. Easier said than done because now you're trying to guess on what they're going to do because they've already they punched it in on the ground against you. They can run the ball. We know that. And now they just connected with a nice bomb down the field. So it's really kind of hard to take those risky shots defensively if you're not 100% sure what the play is going to be. And they're going to give it to Washington, bounces it outside, picks up about four yards, brings it up to about his 47-yard line. Looked like he was stopped initially, but kept those legs churning and got about four yards on that play there. As now the Pirates can now run the football effectively, use that two-back system that they love and been effective with all day, and just take time off of this clock as they do not hurry to the line as he looks for the call over there from the bench. Now the Hornets are making some contact, but they're not bringing them down at the point of contact. Here comes Washington, going to run right through. Hornets have got it strung out. He breaks the tackle to 45 and then brought down to 49. And there again, J.R. Robinson made it to hit four yards deep, but it took a, another four yards to bring him down. Yards after contact is a major stat when you're running back and a defense, and the Hornets are giving up a lot of yards after contact. Pick up of about two, and that'll bring up a third and a long four. So the ball is spotted at the 49. They bring in Morris Brailsford. Big tight end sets up in the backfield in front of Washington. We got a flag and we got movement on the Pirates. Should be five yards against them. False start. 
So that'll bring up a third and nine now for Hampton. So a good thing there for the Hornet defense. Maybe they can get a stop and get off the field. 525 remaining in the third quarter. So Washington, the lone setback. Brailsford checks out. Saquon Gooden goes in motion. They're looking to swing it off, but they dump it back underneath the Washington, who's going to be close to the first down. But I think they ran him out right at midfield, which is going to bring up about three yards short. Way to stay home from the defense there as they faked da Daquan Gooden came across the middle. They faked to him and then dumped it back over to Jory in Washington. Great discipline by the defense there. Not body going to fake like they did on the touchdown. Staying at home, everybody playing their position, playing their gaps, and filling those gaps and getting a stop. Making it fourth and three now. Pirates will punt. Sets up a punt. Malik Golson shielding his eyes as the sun is getting it. It's a little bit short. Golson's not even going to attempt to bring that one in as it bounces out of bounds. We'll see where it gets spot. As the field judge comes up, he's going to mark it at the 16-yard line. So a 34-yard punt. So it'll be first and 10 from their own 16 with four minutes and 33 seconds left here in the third quarter. And the Hornets so far have not been able to get anything done offensively. Jamal Jackson is the lone setback behind Rivera with a pair of wide receivers to his left and two to the right. Oh, we got some movement. The flag comes in. Another false start possibly. False start. So, I'll send him back another five yards. Bring a first and 15 at the 11. The Hornets are not doing themselves any favors offensively. No favors at all, Roland. No favors at all. And in a game where they're struggling to get first downs and gain positive yardage, that's not what they need. Nice catch over the middle by Milton Williams. She's down at the 20-yard line. So he picks up about 14. He'll bring up a second and six, so a good pickup there. Check that, picked up nine. Good play call there. As we said, we got to get Mill Williams the ball somehow. I mean, even if it takes him playing quarterback or punting or something, I mean, got to get him the ball, get him involved in this game. Malik Golson goes in motion. He's looking at him, but he got hit at the 15 yard line. He's down inside the 10. Wow, Gilbert Rivera just took a big hit back there. Uh, a gap blitz right up the line, and he is untouched on his way to the quarterback, and he gets another sack. The pressure of this pirate defense has been pretty good today. Brings up a third and 14 for Rivera. Nobody touched that linebacker. If you're a quarterback, you got to see that coming and find a way to get away from that. Marquel Knight goes in motion. Now he's coming back the other way. Rivera throws it underneath the Milton Williams, who's hit at the 15 and down at the 17. So nothing really special with that play before he's brought down by Tyrone Ward. And they've tried that play, and it really hasn't worked for the Hornets yet. This horrible game. play Today. call, just a horrible offensive game plan as a whole because this is – you're going backwards. You're throwing the ball short of the line, not even giving your players an opportunity to make a play. So – so Miguel is inside of his five, actually standing on his two. As Rashad Riddick, another ball into the ground, and Miguel's going to be hit and dropped inside the five. What a terrible snap. Ball went end over end on the ground. Miguel's lucky to even make a play, and they made the tackle inside the five, and now it's going to get really, really ugly here for this Hornet defense. Well, rolling. The sky is falling. And I have not much to say about that because just when we thought that it was okay, they mess up. That's, that's just lack of execution right there. 
You know, the, the long snapper makes those snaps. That's his. That's what his job is. That's all you do, right? I don't think you have any other job but to snap the ball, and that was not the best of snaps. So. And that's twice he's driven the ball into the ground coming back. So they're going to give it. Nope. Antoine's going to run it himself. He's going to die for the pylon, and the linesman signals touchdown, Pirates. So we get a touchdown there, and that was just – uh, actually, I played that by the quarterback, reading the defense, faking it, and getting to the outside and getting off his feet for the touchdown as the Hampton Powers will look to take a 20-point lead. Uh, Jarrell Antone faked it to Jory in Washington right up the middle and then rolled to his right and just made a mad dash to the pylon, diving in, and the field judge giving him six. Prevost with the extra point, which is good. And now the Pirates, with two minutes and 33 seconds left here in the third quarter, lead the Hornets 20 to nothing. Looking at some of these stats here midway through the, or late in the third quarter, 235 yards rushing for the Pirates to 41 for the Hornets and 120 yards passing for the Pirates to 77 for the Hornets and they're just getting outgunned offensively. Every facet of the game they are being beat. You see a punt block, they, well a punt tackle, a miscommunicated punt. I mean it's just endless. It's not one thing, it's another with the Hornets and you see it here today. I mean we start back in the beginning of the game. You have the missed field goal. You have a Ray, a Rack, uh, a whole bunch of penalties because that is just ridiculous and it has not been the best day for the Hornets today as they're being shut out on their home field. Well, Mark Flakes is in to receive this kick, and it's going to him. Let's it go over his head in the end zone for a touchback, so the Hornets will have it first and 10th or 25. Thank you. So Rivera, see if he can get anything going offensively. Gives it to Jamal Jackson who cuts it off the 25 up over to the 30 before he is brought down there by Joshua Thorne. And for Joshua Thorne, that's his 14th tackle of the day and we've really called his name this afternoon. We have called his name a lot. You talk about 14 tackles. He has been a mainstay on his defense. You saw him in the last possession with that A-gap blitz that set up the fourth down, botched snap and he just got it done 14 tackles today now thorne's really been active the six foot 224 pound junior and there he, he is just again. brought down jamal jackson again but not until jackson got his first down pick up of about eight so bring up first and ten ball is spotted at the 39 yard line Swings it out. He licked a Malik Golson, and Malik Golson got alligator arms out there. Well, he did see number 54, Joshua Thorne, coming his way. And Thorne, like Thor, was going to lay the hammer on Golson if he caught that pass. I'll drop it too. Probably saved a few yards because he probably got, he really got lit up back there. So second and ten for the Hornets at their 39. Jamal Jackson, lone setback with Rivera. Here comes Thorne on a blitz. They get it out to Milton Williams. Wow, kind of curious where the where the flag was because that was a horse collar tackle that brought him down, but there was no flag on the play. Lines no flag. Thankfully, he's not hurt after that play. Linesman was right there. I was surprised he didn't make the pass. Pick up about eight, pick up of seven, bring up a third and three. Hornets just trying to get something going. They have to convert here, and if you don't convert, you might have to go for it. And he threw another interception, and guess who? 
Joshua Thorne is going to bring it back all the way down inside the 10 before he's brought down by Jamal Jackson at the 8-yard line. But we do have a flag at the 42-yard line, so let's see what it is. Flag coming at the 42. Unsportsmanlike conduct. So Joshua Thorne. Unsportsmanlike conduct, but he never gave an indication of on which team. Joshua Thorne does it yet again. 15 tackles on the day, an interception. Almost took it to the house, but was tackled there by Jamal Jackson and Aldi. Pirates will have yet another golden opportunity inside of the red zone to extend this lead with 54 seconds remaining in the third quarter. So We brought the ball down at the eight, and we figured out who the personal foul was on based off from where they marched the, f the penalty off. The 15 yards went against the Pirates, and they have it first and 10 just outside the red zone, 23. So Antone trying to put big numbers up on the board and he drops back and he's looking into the end zone and he overthrows his man. Good coverage down there by Tarek Colston. As he was trying to get Marvin Fanfin and just overshot him. So second and 10 from the 23. Brailsford checks back in. The big tight end always sets up in the backfield. Try to break open a hole for Washington. They're going to fake to Washington. Antone's dropping back to pass. He's looking at the... Oh. Well, Moore almost at the interception. Saquon eh? Gooding right off his fingers. Devon Moore almost had the interception. Almost isn't good enough in this game because you needed something to get the ball back for your offense. And so third and 10 at 23, and the Pirates aren't trying to run the clock out or nothing. They're, looks like they're we trying have to put more points on the board. New quarterback in the game, number seven. Looks like Brian Bailey's in the game. The lefty. Brian the Bailey same as Michael puts Vick. the ball on the ground. It looks like the Hornets may have it at the 25. Let's see. He or did Bailey get end up with it? Bailey did end up with it. Loss of two. It'll bring up a fourth. Well, if I'm... Fourth and 12. Carnell Mano, coach of the Pirates. I'm taking them right out of the game because that is not how you want to come in and make an impact. Six seconds left and counting. They may not even get this playoff. May have to turn the field. Whistle went off. It was going to be far right anyways. Took a timeout by the Pirates. So they actually were kicking into the wind. They actually should be happy because now they won't be kicking into the wind. From what I understand, they just called the timeout. So we're, we may be putting time back on the clock and they'd still be kicking it on the assist side. But I'm with you, Byron. Why not kick? We'll see. But now we're looking at the flags on the goalpost. Now they're blowing towards in the... So he may be kicking it in the wind. It's been swirling down here. We'll see what happens. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Pirates called a timeout right before the third quarter was about to end. So we're waiting to see how much more time they're going to put back on the clock. The ball is marked at the 26-yard line, the left hash.
Three seconds is what's been placed back on there as Anthony Prevost drops back at his, bottle's gonna be marked at the 32. So bring up a 42 yard attempt by the Pirates. Follow snap, follows up. It looks good. The kick is good. So a 42 yard field goal by Anthony Prevost extends the Pirate lead to 23 to nothing. And so that's the end of the third quarter here at the Alumni Stadium in Delaware the State. The works. Well, the Hornets have got 15 minutes to do something. Can they do well, it, Byron? You go by what you saw today. No. <laughs> and that's all I can say about that. Yeah, it's been a tough afternoon. Mark Flakes drops back along with Jordan Smith to receive this kick. You kind of just wonder, can you get something, a uh, score off of special teams or something? Anthony Prevost getting ready to lay into it. Short and high. That's going to be close on whether the Hornets have it or not. Prevost kicked it short and high. Let's see who came up with the football. Hampton is really cheering like they've got it. Still waiting on a recovery. Sure enough, they're gonna give it to Brendan Cole. Has recovered the onside kick and it's gone from bad to worse for the Hornets. Well, Roland, just when you thought you've seen it all, like you said, it continues for the Hornets. This downward spiral seems like, and sad to say, it seems like this team as a whole is just falling apart in front of our eyes. When we saw Prevost line up for that kick, he was only three yards away from the ball, so it was not like he was going to drive that ball very deep. The Hornets should have been set to adjust to receive that kick. They give it to Washington, breaks a tackle at the 40 inside the 35 and down to the 32 yard line as that young man continues to put up big yards against the Hornets this afternoon. Carrying a crowd of Hornets or swarm for argument's sake with him as he just gets about eight yards on that carry. Another eight yards for Washington and bring up a second and two. Zarek Carter Jr. now checks in. And he's been just as good as Washington. He really has, Roland. And they give it to Carter. He's going to break it inside the 25, down to about the 20-yard line. Good hard run in there by Carter. Looks like the Hornets were going for the strip there, allow Carter to get even more yardage. And he's already hard enough to bring down as it is. So, Tarek Colston there on the tackle, along with J.R. Robinson. 14 minutes left here in the in the ball game here in the Hornets trail 23 to nothing but trying to strip that football isn't going to bring those running backs down and when you miss that strip they just keep running Carter stays in the game and looks to me like Hampton's going to be content on just running the football eating up time and there he goes Alex Perry with the tackle in the backfield so Good coverage there by Perry. Drops him for about a two-yard loss. And he'll bring up second and 12 at the 22-yard line. Second and 12 for the Pirates. Pirates, they're going to run this clock as long as they need to. 
15 seconds left on the game, or on the play clock. And Antone finally gets up under center. It's already seven seconds left. He fakes it to Carter. Now he's going to throw deep and too deep. And the only person out there was Tarek Colson. So there was obviously a mix-up on the route that was being run by his receiver and Antone on where he wanted to throw. Antone threw for the end zone, but his wide receiver pulled up short and ran a post pattern across the middle. It looks like a miscommunication everything between the quarterback and receiver. It looks like he was thought that the receiver was going to run in post out route, but he ran a in route. So, yeah, Proctor looked like he ran a ran a route right across the middle, and Antone threw the corner fade. Oh, and now Antone's going to run to the outside, and he has tripped up into the backfield. Nice play there by Kevin Jocelyn. He came up and made a nice shoestring tackle of Antone into the backfield for another loss. Bring up a fourth and 16, so a big stop there by the Hornets. Great job there by the Hornets to hold. Fourth and 16, hopefully they can create some sort of offense here possibly. Well, it would have been a 43-yard attempt, but they're going to go for it. Antone's in the shotgun. Oh, and he drew some offside. Free like play. He goes for the free play. Threw up a little bit long there to Rayshon Proctor, but looks like he may have another play because Gabriel Sherrod jumped off sides. Definitely did jump off sides, so it was a free play. But as you see, a lot of times quarterbacks will still just chuck it up, just try to still get that touchdown. Why not? Free play, so. And Proctor actually had a step. Had a step just a bit outside, as they would say. So Throw was a little again. bit long. You know, Antone has not spent any time on his back this afternoon either. The Hornets not just pressure. really haven't gotten the pressure on him to And that was one of the keys to the game, and they haven't gotten any of that. So You're going to have a holding play in the backfield as he throws it into the end zone. Went through the hands of Tarek Colston. The intended target was T.J. Mixon, but you're going to have a throw down there in the backfield. It was a hold. It was ugly. So now the Hornets are going to take over on downs. So first and 10 for the Hornets at their 21. Trailing 23 to nothing with 12 minutes and 5 seconds left here in the ball game. Right now it's really hard to to point your finger on, on what the Hornets need to do offensively to get it going. When Rivera's had time, he's just thrown errant passes. There he has times again. He throws it up to nobody. They are going to flag. It's going to be a defensive holding on Lorenzo Fields as Milton Williams was impeded running down the right sideline. He couldn't get to that football, so they're going to Couldn't get to that flag football. Him. Overthrow might be defensive holding, like you said, though. So, first and ten on defensive holding. Ball will be marked at the 36 yard line at the 15 yard penalty. Jamal Jackson, the lone setback. Hornets trying to get something done. Rivera drops back. He's looking to his right, throws to his right, and has a man. Great catch there. Morris Frazier with the catch for a nice pickup. Pickup of 11, so it'll bring up a first and 10 at the 47 yard line for the Hornets. Two consecutive first downs. First, I don't know how many times we've been able to sit that's at That's a first all for day. the Hornets this afternoon. Nice little screen, and it was almost intercepted. What a bad pass as Charles Owens almost had the football in his hand. Say it's, they set up 
a nice looking screen to Jamal Jackson. He just threw it short and nice Owens screen. almost picked it off. Good play there, but just a nice, not a great throw. He able to get his hands on it and almost. Makes you kind of wonder what would have happened if Jackson actually gets the football because he had plenty of blockers out front. So second and 10 and uh, very fortunate that the Hornets still have retained the football. Throws it over the middle and nice catch there by Malik Golson. Pick up of about 14 as they bring it inside the 40 yard line of the Pirates. Makes me wonder why they didn't do more of that all day. That play has been there all day in the middle of the field. But you just see miscommunication between receivers and quarterbacks, some turnovers and just bad throws uh, and some drops. So it's just been a variety of things that have not helped out this offense today. But you see a little glimpse of what could have been there. So first and 10 for the Hornets. They spot the ball in between the hashes at the 39-yard line. 11 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Rivera swings it out. Caught on the sideline by Marquell Knight. Tried to shake free, couldn't do it. He's finally out of bounds at about the 37 yard line. Pickup of about two will bring up second and eight. Bring up second and eight and. Ten minutes, 45 seconds left. Clock is ticking. And time now becomes a big factor for the Hornets. Had movement on the left side. Not sure whether a flag came in. And then wow. Gilbert Rivera is hammered. The ball comes loose. But the ref is blowing the ball as dead at the 50. There was movement on the offensive line. I think everybody thought there was going to be a flag and a whistle was going to blow. And, and the way that Rivera took that hit was the fact that he thought that the whistle would blow. It was remind, reminiscent of a crash dummy. If you ever watched a crash dummy in those accident tests because he did not see it coming and then out of nowhere the brick wall came and he exploded because that was a hit there. Jerron Surlis actually moved but nobody caught him and that Rivera just paid the penalty. Big third down now. Throws it over Malik Golson. He was held and there was no flag there as well. Malik Colson. <laughs> Mama, there goes that man, Joshua Thorne. He had that sack on Golson, on uh, Rivera, excuse me, third sack of the day. And then he gets a little way with a little hold there, but no harm, no foul. And they will punt. Don't understand why they don't want to go for this. I mean, you're down 23 points. I mean, Would you have nothing else to play for. Less than 10 minutes to play. McGale gets the punt off. Riddick's going to let it go. Goes out of bounds. We'll see where the field judge pulls it up at. Still got the hand. He's marching it off. Now he will stop at the 15. So first and 10 to 15 for the Pirates. 29-yard punt for McGale. No return. And the Hornets defense is called upon again. How many times have we said that today? I mean, these guys need a rest, water, Gatorade, a mixture of the two because these guys have been playing all day with little rest every time we look their back on the field. Not a good position to be in if you're a defense because everyone gets tired at some point. I don't care who you are. Where well, Carter Jr. is the setback. Antone gives it to him as he's running right. Gets over the 15, hit at the 17. Tarek Colston finally chases him out of bounds. Along with Stuart Carey. It's as if these Hornet defenders don't even want to tackle this guy. They're like, look, we're going to push you out of bounds. We cannot stop you one-on-one. -on -one, so what we're going to do is use the sideline as our friend, push you out of bounds. Because I don't think these Hornets are. They've been beat up all day in Brewers. And having to tackle a guy like this in the fourth quarter, it's not easy. So pick up a four by Carter, bring up a second and six at the 19. Ball is spotted on a far right hash. They give it to Carter again, hit it at the 19. That's where he stopped at about the 21 yard line. Maybe two.
That was Christopher Dukes with the run. That was his first play of the afternoon. Well, when you're up 23 to nothing, you can afford to invite anybody you want to the party because there's a lot of room for error. You can bring in the bench players, the third strings. You can even bring in the freshmen. I mean, at this point, you're up 23 to nothing. You got a little room for error. So Duke's flag comes in from the back judge. Play clock went out. It'd be a five yards on the Hampton. Disregard. They've actually called a timeout for Hampton. There is no flag for delay of game. Hampton Pirates have called timeout. That's their first. They have two remaining with eight minutes and 20 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. And the Hornets trailing 23 to nothing to the Hampton Pirates. Big third down and three coming up. Christopher Dukes lines up behind Brailsford, but Antone's rolling to his right. Got a man, and he gets it to him. The 31-yard line. Caught. Saquon Gooding with his reception, picks up the first down, and moves the chains. Moving the chains. They're deciding not to try to run up the clock. They're still being aggressive rolling, like you said. They're daring the Hornet defense to stop, and they're like, we're up 23 enough. We're going to keep our pedal to the metal and not lose any momentum heading into our next game. And they come out throwing with about eight minutes remaining. So Antoine with a nice mix of running and passing the game. He's going to hand it off to Dukes. Dukes up over the 30. Makes a cut inside the 35. Brought down the 40. Two flags come in. L.B. Williams with the tackle, but let's check to see what this flag is all about. The well, penalty was on the Pirates. They marched them back on a hold. Bring up first and 10 at the 21, or first and 20 at the 21. Darius Banks on the reception there. Looks like Picked fans will begin eight, to follow so up the second and twelve. Alumni Stadium. And again, Jarrell Antone is just content on taking his time being between these plays. The clock continues to roll. We're just about ready to tick under the seven minute mark. And a twenty three to nothing lead for the Hampton Pirates. They give it to Dukes on a cutback. He's hit it at the 30 and that's where he's going to stay. Gabriel Sherrod is one of four Hornets in on the tackle. Along with Alex Perry and L.B. Williams, a pair of linebackers. Brings up a third and ten as the ball is marked at the 31. Pirates content on just slowly and methodically moving that football down the field. But more importantly, just eating up the clock. So we're clicked below six and a half minutes. Jarrell Antone rolls right, looking right. Shakes a tackle at the 30 and then hammered at the 34-yard line. Chased down from behind. It's Dan Sajak with the tackle. Bring up a fourth and seven, and the punt team 
will have to come out there. But the Hornets have called timeout, stopped the clock before they get the ball back. The crowd really hasn't had anything to cheer about, so they've just been talking about social events that are coming up, about what they're going to do for Sunday dinner and what have not, and the rest looking of the weekend. To, probably looking forward to the NFL games this weekend as well. Just a disappointing game here for the Hornets this afternoon. Christian Faber, Kenny drops back at his 20, kicked the ball, and Malik Golson stands at his 29, getting ready to get it. Big rush, a lot of pressure, ball hits the ground at the 34, it's going to roll inside the 20, as Golson gets away from it, they down it at the 18 yard line, and the Hornets will have a first and 10 at the 18 as they try to get something going here this afternoon. Ball is marked on the right hash. First and 10 for Delaware State. Najee Jackson checks into the ball game for the first time. Wonder where he's been at all day. So pair of Jacksons in the backfield, Jamal and Najee. But Rivera's looking to pass, and he's got a man. That's Golson out there in the flat. He's going to run himself out of bounds at about the 29-yard line. So a pickup of about 11. Take that back. Pickup of about 8. Ball is marked at 28-yard line, so... So second and two, swings it out again to Golson. Golson's going to have enough for the first down now as he's up over the 30 and down to the 32-yard line. So first and 10 from the 33, back-to-back -back receptions by Golson. Rivera getting chased, and he's going to be brought down at about the 32-yard line. As Nigel Cawthon hauls him down from behind. There's no sense of urgency by the Hornets. They're just methodically walking to the line, acting like they have a whole game left to play. Second and ten with five minutes left in the game. He swings it out to Milton Williams. What a nice catch by Milton Williams coming back for the ball. Picks up about nine. It's going to be third and just a little less than one for the first down. That behooves me all the time. You have a guy who can make catches like that, but you don't throw him the ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, you throw him the ball, you overthrow it, you can be able to win bad positions, but it makes no sense to me. Your fourth measurement of the day, Byron's about ready to happen. Fourth of the day. But the so first and the second half. Yeah, first half had three and only had one this half, so I, I guess they had to get short. one more for us. Hornets trail 23 to nothing with four minutes and 48 seconds here. Official timeout, about a yard, half yard short of the first down. And it's just a, amazing that the measurements that they've had today, Byron, we've been standing up here in a booth and can see it from the far side of the field knowing that they're short. You're speechless. <laughs> For one of the few times in my life, I am, and I really don't know what else to say. I mean, depressing day here at Alumni Stadium. <laughs> so, Hornets, third and less than a yard. Try to keep this drive alive. Try to get something on the board for pride. 
So do you pass for the first or give it to Jamal Jackson? You give it to Jamal Jackson, and let's see. He's up over the sideline. We got a hold in the backfield, and so the play's coming back. He had enough had to a get lot the of first down. Today. Had a lot of penalties today. I don't know what number that is, but it's been a lot of penalties. A lot of laundry on the field, so I guess it was laundry day today at least. But okay. um, And those penalties have just come at critical times. Very Here critical you have times. a first down. The, the hold is on the back side of the play. Jackson doesn't even need that hold to make the cut that he makes to get the first down. And so now, instead of a third and less than a yard, now you're talking third and 11. So Dimitri Hill gets the flag thrown on him. Four minutes and 35 seconds left here in the ball game. Ball is marked at the 33. Rivera looking right. He's got Milton Williams who broke free and got the first down inside the cross and midfield and down in the Pirate territory to 48. Nice pickup of about 18. Good play there by Milton Williams. You see, throwing the ball and catching it in stride. Able to make yards after the catch. Yak. Ball's marked at the 49 of the Pirates. 18-yard pickup for Williams. And Rivera's looking for him again. He's got him, but he just overthrew him. Trying to thread that seam between the corner and the safety, and he just threw it too long. Always tough to make that throw, but unless Milton Williams or Stretch Armstrong or Mr. Fantastic, he was not bringing that catch in. But the time that throw's got to be made is once he breaks past that defensive back. Once he got clear of the corners, when the ball's got to be there, not after the safety rotates over. And he waited too long, and Milton Williams just couldn't get there at that point. So second and ten. Rivera looking down the middle for Golson. He just overthrew everybody there. He had Morris Frazier and Malik Golson. He just overthrew everybody right down the middle of the field. Now the question is, do we have another quarterback that can bring in the game? Because yeah, this isn't getting it done. Miles Morris with the coverage downfield. Third and ten for the Hornets at the 49 with four minutes even left here in the fourth quarter. Makes you want to have an accelerated clock just to get this game over with. But uh, this is painful to watch. Uh, we got movement there, but no flag. Throws it over the middle, and the ball is on the ground. He was trying to get Joe Cerevolo. If I'm the referee, as I know this isn't right, but I'm having a running clock, even on dead balls, because... This game is all but over. Coverage on the play by Keith McAfee broke up that play. Cerevolo's had three targets, and he's dropped two of them. Well, those are things that will keep you <laughs> off the field. I always wonder, 356 remaining, why coaches put guys in a doghouse the day of the game. you got all week to work up to that, but it's neither here nor there. Here comes Joshua Thorne on a blitz, and he got it out, but we got flag. It's maybe I think an we're going to have a false start on the offense. So that's a. I'll bring up fourth and fifteen. So a false start by the Hornets brings up a fourth and fifteen. Ball is marked at the forty-six of Delaware State with three minutes and fifty-four seconds left. Now with you, Byron. I'm at the point where a running clock is probably the best option right now. Because the Hornets just cannot get done anything offensively. Nothing's getting done and much ado about nothing. Well, it's Rivera's pass is complete. We got another flag in the backfield as he got the ball off to Morris Frazier. Well short of the first down, but let's see what the flag is going to be.
Well, it was a holding call on Dimitri Hill. That that ball is going to be or penalty is going to be declined. So the Pirates are going to take over first and ten at the 46 of Hampton. So Jarrell Antone leads him out. He's got Christopher Dukes in the backfield. Gives it to Marcus Hampton. Marcus Hampton with the carry. Picks up about two. Bring up second and eight. Three minutes and 42 seconds left in the game. Timeout being taken on the field. So. Hornets call their second timeout. They got one left. One timeout left. I guess they're trying to salvage any seconds they have remaining. This is a tough day for the Hornets. I mean, it's been a tough season offensively. They'll fall to 2-7 and seven on the season, 2-3 and three in the MEAC. I mean, they are just not putting it all together, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Special teams was solid today up until you saw the botch snap. But other than that, defense has been put in tough positions. And from there, you've just seen the running game of Hampton and their ability to mix it up with some vertical passes down the field off of some play action, getting these linebackers to cheat and beating them for big gains and touchdowns. And the penalties of the Hornets have just killed them as well. A lot of penalties today, uncharacteristic, especially on the offensive line, a young but disciplined group. You see a lot of penalties that should not have happened, a lot of false starts. So you pitch it off to Dukes, running right up over the – Cross the midfield and down to the 46 yard line. It's going to be short of the first down, being up third and about two. So the Hornets take their last time out. Three minutes and 37 seconds left with a third and three coming up for the Hampton Pirates. So. The season is coming down the stretch, whether people know it or not. I mean, the Hornets, this is game number nine here. So have about three games remaining on your schedule. So it'll be interesting to see what the Hornets do down the stretch. I mean, I feel like the seat is a little hot for Coach Cameron Blunt. I mean, one thing hasn't really been a much improvement in wins over the past few years. A lot of stagnant, a lot of division in the locker room we've heard about. So it'll be interesting to see what happens from an athletic standpoint and a management standpoint. And the Hornets are going to have to get something done. They have games coming up against Howard, Morgan State, and FAMU. So. Yeah, the Hornets are going to fall to 2-3 and three in the MAC, while Hampton's going to get their first win in the MAC, or MEAC this year. Um, they moved to 2-6 and six overall and 1-3 in the MAC. Like you say, the Hornets have Howard. They go to Howard next week. Then they have Florida A&M for their last home game before they'll close out on the road at Morgan State outside of Baltimore. Uh, and the Hornets finally get a little pressure. So they bring down Brian Bailey, who checked in at the quarterback position. And Gabriel Sherrod brought him down with a sack to bring up a fourth and 14. And it looks like they're going to stay on the field, Roland. Well, they're going to let that clock run as long as they have to before they bring that punt team out. Yep. As a matter of fact, they may even take a delay of game. They don't care at this well, point in the really ball don't. game. There's 10 seconds left on the play clock. They'll probably even take the five seconds or call timeout just prior to it. We'll see. Now, here comes the flag. There's the delay of game. So that'll bring the ball back down to the 37-yard line. With two minutes and 42 seconds left. So head coach Connell Mayo decides to take the delay of game to five yards. Just eating up play clock is all he's looking to do right now. The Hornets trailing 23 to nothing. Malik Golson stands at his 30. Finney off with a punt. And Golson makes the fair catch at 20. So 
So a 43-yard punt by Kenny. And the Hornets will have a first and 10 at the 21-yard line. So a chance for the Hornets to get a garbage time touchdown, a garbage time touchdown to try to build some, any momentum, possibly for next week's game against Howard. I mean, who's your quarterback? There are a lot of questions. Is the offensive line going to stop committing penalties? Can you develop a run game? Can you get Milton Williams the ball? Can these other receivers catch some passes and get open and create separation? Questions that still have no answers as we progress through the season, and it's coming down the stretch. So more questions than answers, and that is never good on a football team. And The defense has to be a little frustrated with this offense, May, even more than a little. They have to be very frustrated with this offense and know that we can't win this game by ourselves. We can't go out there and score touchdowns as well. We can create turnovers, but we can't score off of every turnover. So, Yeah, for two, two consecutive weeks, we have not seen Malcolm Williams or Dae Hong Chong running the football. Haven't even seen them on the field. Haven't called their numbers. And like you said, they haven't even dressed at times. I don't understand that. You have all week to put guys in the doghouse, punish guys, make them run af extra laps during practice, make them stay after, make them go to study hall, don't feed them. You know, make them wake up early and work out. But don't put them in the doghouse during the football game. You need guys to win the football game, and that makes no sense to me. I mean, bring them out of the doghouse. You got from Saturday to next Saturday to put them in the doghouse. But on Saturday, you got to let them out. Well, we got a timeout on the field. We got an injured Hornet out there with a minute 53 left here in this ball game. Hornets with the football, a third and one coming up on their 30, trailing 23 to nothing to the Hampton Pirates. They're trying to get Keon Williams up to his feet, and he is on his feet. He's going to be helped off as he's favoring his right leg as he comes off the field. Now he's even going to move into a slow jog. So third down for the Hornets, trying to convert. Keep the football here, less than two minutes. Clock is ticking with a minute 45 left here in the fourth. They give it to Jamal Jackson, he bounces off his block. It's gonna be close to the first down. We'll see where they mark it. Miles Morris with the tackle, another injured Hornet. At this point in the game, I would fake injured too. I mean, sheesh. As I Jamal Jackson slowly getting to his feet, so it'll be interesting which running back checks into the football game. To rate of this game, I mean, it might be somebody from the stands. They don't have anybody dressed. I mean, who's going to be on the running back team? Well, it's Lamar Shaw that checks in. He's going to stay in there and block the hit. Milt Williams on a slant. He's got the ball. He's going to cross over midfield or right at midfield. Keith McAfee with the tackles. He, he comes up a little bit lame, runs off the field. Nice pickup first down by the Hornets. First and 10 at the 49-yard line. Just a little short of midfield. Rivera looking, looking. Running out of time, and now he's going to go down. We got a flag. That's going to be a face mask. Jonathan Black with the tackle, but we got a penalty. Face mask. That's how they brought Rivera down was the face mask. So that's going to be a 15-yarder. One of the few penalties that's actually gotten the Hornets way today, I mean. It's going to be first and 10 at the 35-yard line for the Hornets. We got another Hornet down on the field, and I believe that's still Rivera. Yeah, if I was Rivera, I'd stay down too. I mean, you have not played well. Go out while you can. I think on the grabbing of the face mask, they may have dragged a finger across his eyes because I saw him take his helmet off and just reach for his eyes. Always got to watch the rake of the eyes. It's always a tough thing to go through. But at this point, I just think it can't get any worse. It does. Guys getting hurt. Guys getting the eyes raked. Guys getting concussions. Guys not dressed. Fans leaving the stands. No atmosphere. A friendliness. Three consecutive so.
plays that we've had the penalties come up. I don't know what that does as a quarterback to your confidence. Just when you're in, you get taken out. Then when you get taken out, you get put back in. I mean, there's no way to build any rhythm. And I don't know what Kelly's going to do here. He may throw a touchdown just because I said that. Yeah, Marlon Kelly back into the football game. He's going to run it right up the middle. He's got five over to 30, down to the 25-yard line, close to a first down. Another flag comes in. Let's see what we got here with 53 seconds left here in the ball game. He's pointing against the Hornets, so let's see what we got for a play. Maybe coming back here. Let's see, they're marking it off. It'll be a 10 yard penalty. So, first and 20 for the Hornets. Or first and 10 from the 35. Lamar Shaw is going to set up as one of the wideouts. Kelly drops back to pass. He's looking for a man. He's got it. It's Milton Williams. Breaks the tackle to 30. Hit at the 32, and that's where he's going to go down. Shook the tackle of Miles Gordon before he was finally brought down by Frank Morlock. But not until he picked up nine. So he'll bring up a second of one. 38 seconds left here in the ball game. The Hornets just trying to get something on the board. Finally, Milton Williams getting involved. It's very interesting to see. Uh, we got movement. Let's see who they're going to make that call on. You got 73 and 42. Jaron Surlis was moving, but so was, and that's who they're going to get. Jaron Surlis for the false start. Caused Treshawn Council to come across the line early. So march off five yards, brings us up a second and six, and the ball is marked at the 31 yard line. 38 seconds left to go in the game. Hornets still have time to put it in. It's just, can they put it in? That is the question we've been trying to answer all season, Roland, and it has not been answered yet. Well, Kelly's getting flushed. He's looking to throw. Throws it downfield, deflected. That was Frank Morlock putting his hand on the ball, knocking it out of bounds. Tended receiver was Joe Cerevolo. Bring up third and six from the 31. 32 seconds left. You see Gilbert Rivera getting worked on on the sideline. Uh, looks like he's done for today. Kelly dropping back, throwing over the middle, and it's dropped. Marquel Knight wide open at the 15-yard line. He just dropped the football. And uh, if you listen to Alumni Stadium, you heard a collective, oh, and like that to Hornets. And a horrible day. One of the most horrible days probably in, uh, in alumni stadium history. I mean, we could probably look that up, but this has been one of the worst days. Fourth and six, 28 seconds left. You need the, you need the first down, first of all. They're better off just taking a knee here. No, they're not going to do that. Sure enough, right like off I the said, hands better of more Paul Knight, <laughs> and then it's intercepted. By Jamari Cord. Went right off the hands of Marquell Knight, right into the hands of Jamari Cord, and that's just been the day for the Hornets this afternoon. That's why I suggested maybe taking a knee to save yourself some, any prior rolling, any. Man, oh man, oh man. 19 seconds left, and you got to think now that the Pirates are just going to be set up in the victory formation, which they do. As Rayshon Proctor is standing at his goal line to make sure that no football gets back that far. 
So, the Pirates are going to take a knee, and this is the way this football game is going to end. It's the clock ticks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a tough afternoon for the Delaware State University Hornets here at Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware. The clock ticks down with five, three, two, one. That's the end of the ball game, ladies and gentlemen, as the Hampton University Pirates have defeated the Delaware State University Hornets 23 to nothing. From Derek Slayton out on the field and Byron Dixon up in the booth, I'm Roland DeVries, and we're glad that you made us part of your Saturday afternoon. So we ask that you stay safe throughout the rest of the weekend. If you're driving home later on tonight, please be safe in doing that too. But enjoy your day, and thank you, and good night.